to strap in and get ready. The leaders in NRL Supercoach are incoming. Bringing you the ultimate insight to help you win your leagues and climb up the rankings. You're now listening to the Insight NRL Show with your hosts, Brain, Matrix, and Whisperer. Yes, welcome back to the Insight NRL Show. It's Tin List Tuesday, and boy, oh boy, do we have some changes to discuss on probably what would we call one of the most important rounds in the NRL Supercoach season, I reckon, Josh. Uh, we're matrixless again, though. Uh, but we're starting to get used to carrying the load by now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, definitely. By the by, the state of our absolute ranks. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, but yeah, like it's a combination because round three is huge anyway for for regular trades because of price rises. But also on top of like this carnage that was Teamless Tuesday, like it was absolutely mental, and we have a lot to dive into. But absolutely huge. Um, I'm very disappointed with my rank. I I, I thought you know mid nine hundreds would get me a great, a great arrow, but it didn't. So that was a bit of a rude shock yesterday morning, opening up the app. Yeah, yeah. I, I got 987 and I thought, shit, I, I, maybe I'll see a little bit of green. I'm at 50,000 or something. So and I went back 2,000 spots. I'm like, cool. All right. Yeah, I lost about 25K. Which yeah. was not- <laughs> Awful. But we'll be it's right. right. It's a long season. Um, guys, as always, the show is brought to you by the Standard Squeeze and Ryan from Astute Newstead. We thank them for their support. Uh, drop your questions in the comments. Uh, I'm trying to keep up at the moment, but they're flying in. There's a fair bit going on. So uh, we'll, we'll do our best to get to some of the questions tonight. We won't be able to get also, to all of them, of course. I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone because like, this is the most amount of people we've had like ready to go. So we're, we're growing week on week, but yeah, everyone that's like ready to go by 8 o'clock is, is mental. So thank you so much for just giving us more to talk about. Yeah, that's it for sure. It's good, it's good chat in the comments as well. Uh, good boost, banter. Boost for, boost for any player is just yeah, yeah. filling the chats. I saw a boost for Blake Taff in there, and that, that's a questionable one. But you know, we're, we're here to I, entertain. I'm all seeing, those. I'm seeing a boost for Jeff Robson. Bring back uh, Matrix. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Matrix is the glue that holds this place together, and his rank is me- keeping us more credible. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of Matrix, we spoke about how we went. He got a 1062 last week, and he's in 21,000th. So he's the best of the bunch at the moment. Uh, yeah, we are missing him. We need some credibility back on this podcast. So he will be back on, uh, I think, Thursday morning. Fuck, it's nice to be some people. Just goes away for a week holiday. No problem. Um, but he will be back. Uh Guys, obviously hit like and subscribe if you haven't yet. We would appreciate that. Uh, it helps us reach more people, get out to more people. It seems to be working. Uh, great to see so many people in the comments as well at the moment. Uh, and if you're listening to us on audio, please hit that follow button and leave us a five-star review. Or, I mean, if you don't think we deserve five stars, maybe just don't leave us a review. But um, <laughs> if you like us, leave us a five-star review. We'd love that as well. Uh, and, of course, if you haven't yet, join the Unlimited League. It's 77141 is the code, 777141. You can win a SC Champions ring for the winner. And also, we're going to be giving away the squeeze of the week very soon, which is the highest score in this unlimited league. So, speaking of, we probably should give away the squeeze of the week that is, of course, brought to you by the Standard Squeeze. If you are sick of breaking glass bottles, maybe your beer is going warm, uh, which doesn't happen to Matrix on this show for everybody. If you know, you know. Um, or maybe if your coffee gets a little bit cold in the morning, the Standard Squeeze, they've got everything for you to drink responsibly, but also conveniently. Um, Standard Squeeze products are made from food grade quality plastic, so you can measure the perfect pour in case you need to drive and you need to know how much you've drank. Uh, so you can go to the website, thestandardsqueeze.com, and you can use the code INSIGHT15 to get yourself 15% off everything in store. And uh, the, the winner for round two is Wayne, coach of Beast Incarnate, with a 12.55, putting us all to shame. Um, I, I pulled up his score, uh, sorry, his team very quickly before. I'm probably going to have to do that again very quickly because he had, uh, where is it? Give me one sec. This is good. Um, good audio content. Good having audio here, but yeah, like content. 12.55 is absolutely massive. That's Ooh. mental. That's probably more than what I've got the first two rounds combined. So well done, Wayne. <laughs> uh, he's got uh, double uh, hookup guns in Grant and Robson. And then he's got Haas and Cotter in the front row. So very solid team up front. Very and it seems anti, to be anti-template. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess, I mean, we've gone template, haven't we? And that didn't really <laughs> work out too much. Um, yeah, he's got Finifuiaki nice and early. He went in a week early on him. So that worked out beautifully for him. Somehow he predicted the Lukey um, injury. Genius. And uh, yeah, his team's looking really nice. Pappenhausen captain last week with 132. So he's uh, in a great spot. I so think well he done. may have changed 
our overlay because our ranks end. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's you, back. You've done the rest. <laughs> Don't mind me. Because I want to flex. I want to flex my seventy thousand rank. That's why I went up there. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. No, no, we're all about transparency here on the Inside NRL show. You know, if we're going good or we're going bad, we'll we'll still show you. Um, so contact us, Wayne, uh, if you're watching us on contact at insightfantasysports.com.au is the email. Just flick us a photo of your teammate, and we'll get you that standard squeeze pack. Thanks to the standard squeeze and the current leader of the league is Aaron, coach of Shotguns. Who he's in 329th overall. So good on you, Aaron. Keep it up, mate. And uh, Insight Supercoach World Cup, Josh, has uh, just kicked off. And it's the first chance we've got to combine both sports ranks. And and there were some interesting uh, statistics. And I know you were begging me to put your AFL rank on the screen tonight instead of your NRL one. You did all right last week in AFL. Yeah, started well, mate. Started well. Um, as I said, this, this may turn into an AFL podcast by about round five if the way things <laughs> keep going. But I just want to shout out to uh, oh, who's in the chat. Um, Joshua Baxter. He said, higher number, the better, right? And I'm just training super coach like golf. You know, if we can just keep increasing that rank one way or the other, we'll be fine. Yep. It's yeah, so right. fine. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Like we, I said this to you before that we started. Like, my team is good. Like I'm not, I don't have a crap team. I just, no one's performing, but yes, the super coach world cup. It doesn't matter if one of your teams is un- underperforming because you've got three other sports to make up for it. So we've had our first batch through already. Uh, round one of AFL is completed round two of NRL is completed. And we've got Brad L leading with a combined percentage of 7.93%. Tom H with 9.37. Kevin with 15.6. Matthew P not to be mistaken with Matthew OB uh, 19.3. 9.5 and Alex with 20.69. So as you can see, you don't need to have blockbuster ranks. Brad's ranked, you know, 15K in Supercoach and only 8K in AFL like, and he's winning it. So you don't need to, you know, be a genius in all of it, but just be consistent. But we'll keep you updated as the ranks go on and those will, you know, start to level out more as we get through. So inside Supercoach World Cup, I'm glad it's finally off the ground and running. Yeah, but yeah, long, long way to go. Round two of, sorry, round three of probably 100. So we're, uh, we're definitely still in the early stages. Yeah, it's good fun. It, it also makes me focus a lot more on AFL. Like as an NRL person who doesn't watch a ton of AFL, it makes me watch it a little bit more, um, pay a little bit more attention. Also, the boys at the Insight AFL show are doing a cracker job over there. So if you want to know a bit more about AFL, you can jump on and watch those boys too. Rude heads, but they're, they know but they're also, footy. But also, like you have kids, so you don't get to appreciate it as much as me. But I can wake up at like 8, 30, 9 o'clock on a weekend you know, do my chores. And then AFL starts at 12.30, 1 o'clock. So it's just like amazing. And then we get straight into the footy. So it's an all afternoon affair. But we're here for NRL and we've got plenty to discuss today. A couple of injuries, Brano. Let's uh, let's hit this. Down. Oh, mate, it was a brutal 10 seconds if you're a plus farmer Suliano. Poor guy. Yeah, he's, uh, he's out for the week concussion. Um, tough for owners there. And uh, I know a few people that are actually doing pretty well in the rankings that uh, copped a farmer Suli minus one, I think it was. So, um, but there, there were a few concussions this week, weren't there? There was, there was Bailey Simonson picked up one as well. And obviously there was a big reshuffle in the back line for Parramatta and Isaac Pungo took full effect. Seb Chris, he also picked up a head knock. So 11 day stand down for him. Christian Welch, uh, I think he passed his, did he? Or was he out? No, no, he failed his. He's oh, up. he failed his. He failed his, obviously. Uh, Code Nicarima also failed his despite wearing headgear. Bit of a weird one there. I thought there was a correlation. But the Shout biggest, out to NRL physio. The biggest one, also a headgear wearer, Luke Keary, suffering his, uh, you know, uh, huge run of concussions he's had uh, listed. And uh, he was out for a, a while and probably will have a decent rest, you'd think. Roosters handled this stuff pretty pretty well. They, they generally air on the cautious side of things, and especially with Kiri with his you know, medical history. I'm not a doctor. I don't want to say that the bloke should retire. It's very subjective. But as many concussions as he's had, we saw, we go back to AFL, we saw Angus Brayshaw um, retire at the start of this season because he just couldn't get those concussions right. I think he had five in the space of three years. So Kiri's probably had that as well. I'm not saying, you know, retirement's on the cards, but sickening signs for him. And obviously hope he is all good and gets the help that he needs. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's his sixth uh, diagno- diagnosed concussion uh, mm. throughout his career, which is, which is concerning. I know Tedesco's had a fair few as well. So look, hopefully these guys aren't just going to cop too many knocks and, and hopefully we see Luke Keary back very quickly. 
uh, off the concussion front and more into the uh, injury front would be Adam Reynolds first off cab off the rank with the MCL sprain. So he's re-aggravated that MCL. Um, so he's going to miss this week. We'll talk about lineups and, and team lists and stuff very soon. Payne Haas has been named though, which I, I guess is a relief to owners because obviously he's pretty well owned at front row forward. Um, you know, we're seeing him named, but I don't think he's out of the woods yet, is he? Because they were a little bit concerned about this knee. Yeah, Xavier Wilson's been training all week. So look, he's been named. If he if he plays, it's not going to be obviously Payne Haas at his best. He's still he's still starting him. You're not benching him, of course, but probably just temper your expectations. Uh, a man that you are selling, though. Oh, I don't know if you're selling, but uh, it's definitely trouble streets because he's not named. He probably won't be named for the next four to six weeks. Is Greg Mazu? Uh, he's out with a wrist slash hand injury. He's going to require surgery. And our physio has said anywhere from four to eight weeks. So a huge, huge blow for them. I was having a chat with a couple of Knights fans today, my friend. And you go from Dom Young and Greg Mazu to Anari Tuala and Tom Jenkins. It's a, it's a bit of a downgrade, isn't it? Yeah, we've gone from the Ponga Maju stack to the Ponga Tuala stack. I'm not quite sure it kind of carries the same kind of weight. Um, so, yes, yes. And yes. Ponga is an interesting one in itself. We'll talk about oh, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll have an absolutely monstrous chat today about KP because he's definitely going to feature uh, pretty hard. Josh Adokar has been sort of, he said he's been, he's good to go, but features nowhere on the team lists and nowhere in the extendeds either. So definitely a weird one there because he was given the green light to go ahead, but they just haven't named him. They've named Tracy on the wing with Willis on the wing as well. And, and no uh, Josh Adokar in the extended. So it's definitely a, a watch for that one because yeah, apparently he should be all good to go, but he's not. James Fisher yeah. Harris. Oh, sorry. Yep. Sorry. I was just going to say though, he was apparently very close last week to being able yeah. to play, which is quite strange because, I mean, he was – everyone was saying, oh, this is going to be a multi-week injury, and then they've gone, oh, he was just missed out on last week. I'm thinking, fuck, all right. Oh, because I was thinking maybe it was Jarrell Skelton season and uh, not to be. No, nah, it's just uh, another utility that they've got lined up there. Um, James Fisher-Harris shoulder. Now, first few years for Penrith were very, very bad. They, they worried that this was going to be a lengthy time off. But he's out with a shoulder, so that sees Lindsay Smith elevated to the starting squad. And uh, Luke Garner on the bench with Matt Eisenhuth as well, with Scott Sorensen staying on the edge. Stafford Toa picked up a high-grade syndesmosis and looking like he's going to be out for about eight weeks, which, I don't know, Brent Naden's floating around, but they've obviously named um, Solomon Fa'atape. Look, he only scored a 21 on the weekend, break even of, I think, not much. I think it's about 21 as well. So not a huge pressing issue, but if Brett Naden's not ready for a couple of weeks or, you know, going to be eased back through reserve grade, then Fata Ape could be a decent downgrade, but we'll touch on that. Helam Luki, nine points on the weekend. Very, very tough to swallow. Another syndesmosis for him as well, and that's going to be anywhere from, you know, six to eight weeks. So, you know, then is it fitted for Wiaki season? We'll touch on him today as well. And Jacob Little picked up a knock during the game last week. I was surprised he played it as long as he did and has not been named this week. Uh, it's not a dropping or anything like that, not on the extendeds. Uh, it's purely a knock-based thing. So if you have him, I'd probably hold uh, until we get further information on how severe this injury is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think he's definitely a hold. But I... Go going back to Helam Lukey, he's going to be a conversation I think that uh, we're going to be having in terms of which of these lucky two RFs we're going to have to pick because there's a few on the on the block at the moment that we could go with. Um, there's, few, there's a few either way as well. Like there's there's like yeah. 270k options, and then there's you know 580k options. There's there's a wide spectrum to talk about here. So we've got a few. We've got a few. Sorry, I'm just reading a few of these comments. They're, they're very interesting. Um, there's a, there's a lot of boosting going on in the chat, and there's a, there's lot, a lot of questioning of wiki, around. There's a lot of wiki bashing as well tonight in the yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of weak gutted dog floating around as well in the chat. So, uh, yeah, and to be fair, fair game because when you see Hosking with a minus fifty odd break even, and then Ricky names him on the bench, that's absolutely criminal, super coach wise. So he deserves everything he gets this week. Um, let's let's move on and, and preview the week, shall we? <laughs> And of course, the uh, weekly preview is brought to you by Ryan from Astute Newstead, the man with the best moustache in the game. Uh, if your rates are above 6.2%, maybe you want to buy a home, maybe you want to refinance or re renovate your current home, or maybe you just want to save some cash like the rest of us, then you can reach out to Ryan from Astute Newstead 
for an obligation and cost-free inquiry. His link tree is in the description below in this video. Use the code INSIGHT to let him know we sent you and he'll look after you. He's currently looking after me, trying to sell my house. It'd be very interesting to see how that plans out. But uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to pack up and move again. It's going to be great fun. The best, the best times. It's always fun. It's always fun packing. But the weekly preview, kicking off with probably the game of the round, Panthers versus Broncos. Now, there's a huge, you know, a lot of ins and outs here. The main outs, Adam Reynolds for the Broncos and James Fisher-Harris out for the Panthers. Panthers line up as you expect, but, you know, we've already mentioned Lindsay Smith comes into that starting side with Matt Eisenhuth also coming in as well. Now, super coach relevance, Cleary obviously playing. Um, do you expect a dominating game from him at home on a Thursday? Is he worthy of a, a captain consideration for you? Against the Broncos? uh I, I I think the matchup doesn't really kind of fill me with love for the VC, uh, especially in Thursday night football. I think it's the Thursday night, definitely not a straight caption op, uh, captain option for sure. Uh, Thursday night curse continues. But there's a I'll, there's I'll a, a elsewhere. in the FPL community. There's a, a Gandhi meme floating around, and it's never back the early kickoff. Um, no one likes to captain because you don't get the loop in FPL, so it's just basically a, a captain or, or not. And um, you know, even if Erling Haaland was playing Sheffield United. But if it's the first game of the round, no one likes to do it because they think there's some some weird juju getting around. So I'm the same. I think there's a, another favorable matchup for a halfback as well, but not too much to preview there. Uh, you know, teams line up as per barring some injuries. I mean, Jock Madden comes in, but that doesn't change anything for me. But there is some relevance to talk about here over the ditch. Uh, the Warriors taking on the Raiders. Now, the war uh, the Raiders line up, uh, sorry, the Warriors line up 1-17 to from last week, but the Raiders... There's one big name that's in, and it's E. Whitehead, and he's got a C next to his name, Matthew Brayno. What's going uh, on? Captain, straight into the back so... row, and number number 16, the top scoring it's... player this year in Supercoach, Zach Hosking, and the most traded in player, has been turfed. What's going on? I think, uh, and look, there's been a divided opinion, hasn't there, around even Raiders fans. I've kind of infiltrated a few Canberra Raiders Facebook groups just to kind of see what was going on with with the conversations around this. And a lot of people were basically like, no, there's no way Whitehead can make his way back into this team. He's just not good enough. He's 34 years old. He's 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 old. He's shit. over the hill. He's no good. He's not good enough to play on an edge. So there's not a lot of people that like this move. And, and obviously Ricky's like, no, nah, fuck yeah, I'm doing what I want. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Hosking finds his way onto the bench, which is, which is bad for super coach. But you know what? I breathed a sigh of relief when I saw this move because I was just oh, really I, I'd hesitant. I'd this week the next week because I was locked in. I wasn't moving. I was like a bull in a china shop. I was just lasered in. Nothing else could, could change my mind. I was a Zach Hosking owner for a good uh, day. And uh, as I put out on Twitter today, uh, the club have re- have uh, released him from his contract. So, unfortunate. Let's go back to the Warriors quickly because they are the home side. Nothing major to talk about here, but there is some reports getting around that Charles Eagle Klux are probably looking at more of around five, round six, which is absolutely amazing for Tane to a peak here. We're going to get more than one price rise out of him. So, congratulations if you jumped on. If you didn't own Tane to a peak there's obviously nothing concrete about him. Are you moving out of your way to buy him? Because he's a, he's a solid center wing four, but I feel like it's a bit of a waste of a trade just for one or two price rises. I guess what you're looking at is the depth of your center wing or whether you've been able to na- nail those cheapies at center wing. Like, have you got Strange at center wing? Um, did you, I mean, are you stuck with Gagai as well is another consideration as to whether you're going to buy a guy that's going to be probably out of the team in two to three rounds. Again, they're saying that Chance Nickel Klukstar is going to be back within two to three more weeks. So if that's two more weeks, we still get two price rises out of uh, to a peaky, so that's fine. How do you predict those price rises going though? What's his break even this week? It's kind of low negative teens, isn't it, from memory? Yeah, yeah, I don't have it up. I've got the NRL screen up on. I'll have on a look quick. Here, but I could, I could quickly pull it up. So I do have. I am fortunate to have three screens. So Tane to a peak, his break even is minus twenty one. So if he scores, I put this on Twitter the other day. So you're looking at for you guys that are wanting to do your projections, it's about eight hundred and fifteen dollars to eight hundred and seventy. Seems to be a bit of a sliding scale, but I'd always just bank on the lower end for your price rises. So if he scores, say, 40 points, that's 60 points over his break even. So if he scores 40, we're looking at about a 50K price rise for Tua Peaky, which for me, it's probably not worth that trade. Not, not that 50K um, because you're going to have to move him on in probably two weeks anyway. So, uh, I mean, look, if you've got 70K sitting there and you've got nothing else to do and you're stuck with the gag eye, then, you know, by all means, jump on. But I wouldn't be out of my way to, you know, pick him up. So 
uh, yeah, that's just my two cents. But for the Raiders, and I'm sure plenty of people want to know this, Brano. Mm-hmm. Plenty of people are pretty confident that come five o'clock on Friday afternoon, we will see uh, a bit of a switcheroo. We'll see Elliot Whitehead to the bench and Hosking to start. Do you think that's got legs or do you think that's people just holding on for, for hope? I think it's got legs. Uh, you know, Ricky is very well known to play mind games, very much like Des Hasler, who likes to fuck around with his team and then make uh, mass changes an hour before. Um, so there's every chance, I think, that Hosking still starts. But it's the uncertainty for me at the moment that means that I'm just off Hosking. Uh, I was initially hesitant about Hosking anyway, Like, the, and the amount of times that Ricky can fuck around with his lineup just kind of deters me, I guess. I think the thing is, yes, the cash grab is great, but if you're a Morgan Smithy's owner, I couldn't, I couldn't do it because Ricky has said all preseason, "I love Hosking, I love Hosking, I love Hosking." He's the man. We love him. He does all the hard work. He said the exact same thing about Morgan Smithy. So my fear is buying Hosking this week for the amazing cash grab. It's it's going to be a good cash grab. But what happens if Smithy's is named to the bench next week with Horsburgh starting? I don't think that will happen. But but what if it does? Then you're stuck with two Raiders guys on the bench, and you're like, "Well, shit. Now what?" And you're going to have a couple of emerging cheapies come through as well. So I think it's too much of a headache. One thing I didn't mention about the Warriors is a certain number seven lacking the goal kicking tee last week. We, mm. we discussed this on Sunday, and I know some people don't tune in for the Sunday show, but I think this may just be an unreported quad or groin. I don't think there's anything too major. He's had a history of quad injuries recently over the last two years as well, hasn't he? So yeah, it might be a re-aggravation of that. We haven't heard anything from NRL physio. If he's going to know, or if we're going to know anything about injuries, it'll be him. Um, but yeah, th- that's a question that we've got a, a question where I've got to find it. Questions are flying in left, right, and center here. Um, someone had in the chat SJ and Moses. Now, yes. I believe that was that's, an, a, uh, that's Nick, a conundrum. Nick Porridge. Uh, I have SJ and Moses. What do I? Who do I yeah, trade out? I probably wouldn't trade any. I feel like, like, and we'll get to this with the buy, holds, and sells and Mitch Moses features, but if you didn't sell last week with the groin, I think you just write it out because I have a decent draw coming up. And same with SJ. You know, if he gets a goal kicking back, if it's just a one-week thing, you'd hate yourself if he's if he's off. So um, we'll touch on that more, but I just wanted to make note that SJ, I, I'm not expecting anything major. Uh, and, and I guess, sorry, quickly, last thing on um, this whole Raiders debacle. Now, there's some people saying, do you just kind of just plug him in and, and take the cash and run? Because, I mean, Hosking, Adam S. in the chat said Hosking for 25 still makes 70K. Now, what, how worth much it. is a trade worth to you now? If you're if you're going to just go and get him purely for the cash grab and potentially move him on within a fortnight, how much do you need to see from him? Like, normally I say 100K, but if, if I'm banking on another trade in two weeks, like, I want more. I want, like, 140, 150. And I just don't think that's enough. I mean, if yeah. he's named on game day, and you have nothing else. Like, if you're very lucky, you don't own Lukey, you don't own Ponga, you don't own any of these guys with, like, monster break-evens that are injured, yeah, I, I don't hate it then. Like, if you've got no pressing issues, you somehow started with Lusick, you, I think you're fine. Like, then, yeah, you could probably pick him up. But if you're like me, who's got 17 fires to put out, unfortunately, picking up a nice 100K price rise is not going to be one of my main priorities. So, uh, it was, I'm just scared being a Smithy's owner that this happens next week, and I am pulling my hair out but there's also plenty of opportunities to make cash this week yeah, we're not fine. just looking at hosking there's so many other options so we'll talk about them soon but we can move on to friday 8 p.m's game roosters and rabbitos at alliance stadium this should be a good one sam I smith said, though i said game of the round for the first game this could be the most entertaining this though is up there yeah grand final rematch on thursday and then we get friday night we get roosters versus rabbitos at alliance like this is a cracker kiri misses obviously sam and smith comes in to replace him but nat butcher is into the starting lineup. Sia, Sua Wong has been dropped completely. Gone. Yeah, not even in the extended. It's just... Oh, sorry. He's named at 22. Named at 22. My apology. But yeah, he's just been dropped. And we see the return of, of Gus. The big Gus, Gus bus. bus is back. He's back, he's baby. And right. Terrell May has been promoted from 17 to 16. So huge moves there <laughs> for him. Do you, do you think Terrell May starts again for JWH as he did last week? Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Oh, I don't know. In this game? Like maybe Robbo is just like, nah, I need JWH out there just to give hell for 20 minutes. Could be. But also we saw, I mean, as good as Terrell May was last week, he had way more impact off the bench, didn't he? After about maybe 15, 20 minutes when the the middles were a little bit tired and he came on fresh. Like imagine 
being pretty buggered and having heavy legs and you see Terrell May trot onto the field, you'd be in all oh, sorts of trouble. It's more, it's more like a Davy Moali who's like starting. You've got JBH running at you for, you know, all guns blazing for 15 and then Terrell May just comes on. It's just like, it's it's a nightmare. Um, But yeah, for for the the Roosters, yeah, big ones being Nat Butcher comes in, Sue Wong means has been dropped. And my fa- I know I like, push a lot of Max King agenda. Um, my actual favorite player is Connor Watson. So I'd love to see him back in the sword. He had a great game in reserve grade last week, as did Gus. So good to see them be rewarded. For the Rabbitohs, huge news. Lockie Ilias dropped. Drew Hawkins in. David Mowali in. The Cappuccino. Oh, mate, he's been dropped to the bench. It makes me sad. I had about four cappuccinos today because my kid kept me up all night. So uh, that was that was good. That was good of him. But yeah, look, uh, D- Dean Hawkins as well, not not Drew. Yeah, I think you is a Drew oh, Hutchison in your head. You've been I'm thinking about Drew Hutchison I'm all weekend. You just mid mid halfbacks. No, Dean Hawkins. <laughs> <my> apologies. <laughs> um, that that's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, they've just basically axed Ilias, which to be fair, I agree with. He hasn't exactly been great. Um, they did need to freshen up there. It's. It's it's tough because like people, uh, the media are, are like, oh, this is a quick decision, but they've lost they've lost eleven of their last sixteen games. You're never dropping Latrell, you're never dropping Cody, so it's like, unfortunately, Ilias, you got to go. I don't think Ilias is, is good enough at the moment, but I also do think he's the one that's been targeted a little bit. But you know, that's just the problem with playing seven for for the Rabbitohs. It's a you know high profile position. You had Adam Reynolds there for you know donkey's years, and you axed him for. Um, apparently axed him for, for Dean Hawkins. Like apparently Hawkins was supposed to be the the heir. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Ilias is bounce back, bounces back and what happens. I mean, if Ilias doesn't play great in reserve grade and Hawkins doesn't play great, goodness, do you play a Jai Gray at seven? Because that's a huge ask for him as well. Like it's a, not a fun, I mean, they, they'd love an Adam Reynolds at this stage right now, wouldn't they? Jeez. Yeah, that's. I think that joke will just last the test of time, won't it? With, uh, imagine if they had a really good organising halfback that had a bit of experience under their belt, but they oh, don't. Imagine. They imagine. Um, speaking of inexperience, Dave Mowali gets the call up. We've mentioned uh, Sean Kepi to the bench. Now Mowali, he's not a watchless player for me. I think you've got to buy him or you don't because he had that big score last week, and that price is going to start motoring this week. Are you tempted, or do you just think no matter who starts, it's just going to be a forty-minute roll? Yeah. That's what I think. I mean, we see Tavita Totola play 45 minutes and he's the guy, you know, there, there's no other option. He is the premier front row forward in this team. So uh, I, I am not touching Moali. I, I still have scars. I still got PTSD from last season, having him on my bench for the majority and being an AE nightmare. So no, thank you. Scored a 63 last week. That was with the tries. So probably something more around 35. Um, has a break even of minus 17. If if we see him get kept his minutes, he could probably push that to 40 and that's, you know, 12, 13 points of value. But you know, do we really want to be fucking around with front row forward and, and trying to pick up, trying to be cute? Like, if Mowali started in round one, I probably would have started with him. But he's not a guy that I'm just like, I'm wanting to waste a trade for 12 points of value. Like, I'd rather just find the cash and get Cotter. <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, uh, Ian Dunson wants to know, do we boost for Havili? Uh, and unfortunately, Aman um, mentioned before that he has to to go off to his stream. But he'll catch the replay later. Uh, he's also, he's a big advocate of Havili, but no, I would not be boosting for Havili. Um, so some rotation, uh, Jason Demetrio named Shaq Mitchell at 13 last week. Uh, I'm not too sure why, but he did. And I, I think he's come back to his senses and Jacob Hoss has been recalled and Cam Murray, uh, one of the best middles in the game has moved back to middle shock horror. That's a good decision from, from Demetrio and Talos Duncan to the bench. So, um, <sighs> unlucky for Talos Duncan buyers last week, or do you think it's a bit of, this is why we wait. Yeah, this is why we wait. Uh, like, as much as it sounds like I'm being a dick, like, this is exactly why we watch. Because, yeah, the beauty of it is we get to wait, we get to watch, we get two free looks at each player. And we'd be silly to jump on a guy that hasn't played much and is coming off, a, I think, was it a calf injury? He's been nursing a calf injury for the majority of the preseason, has had a limited preseason, hasn't played in the first game. And then we see him come back and his role gets fucked around heaps. And we see like Cam Murray's role gets fucked around heaps. So now they've gone back to normal, which is good. I think Talos Duncan off the bench is, is a better role. And I think Cam Murray starting at lock is where you need him. You can't have him wasted on an edge. And we saw that last week when they got steamrolled through the middle. So th- this is their best lineup for sure. 
Yeah. Uh, and just before we move on to the next game, I do want to give a shout out to Shaq Mitchell, who went from not being picked in round one to starting in round two to then being dropped in round three. So well, well, wind of emotions for him. Uh, moving on to, oh, what a cracking game this year, Sunday, Saturday afternoon. Bulldogs taking on the Titans. Wowee, that's a, a nice game to look at. We see one change. We see Liam Knight coming in for Poasa Farmasuli. Now, Liam Knight, I think this is a well-deserved call-up, had an absolutely monstrous game for in the New South Wales Cup. I fear that Liam Knight is a, is a typical, way too good for New South Wales Cup, not good enough for first grade. But the dogs have that, you know, issue just with their with their middles at the moment. But he gets a call up. I've got no interest whatsoever. Bulldogs middles are a little bit all over the shop, but they also line up as expected with Kurt Mann, Sam Hughes, Josh Curran, and Curtis Morin on the bench. Now, Josh Curran, great game last week, fifty three minutes, fifty six minutes, something like that from memory. I put him today in the watch list. Now that got some eyebrows raised because people are wondering why he's not a buy, uh, why not not a slam dunk buy. What are we doing with Curran? Because he's got great value, but you'd hate to buy him and you get 40 minutes when everyone's fit. Uh, Hey, the question goes back to what are you doing? Because I own him. I've owned him since round one. So a bit of a punt and it worked, which is great. But obviously, this is the Jermaine Hopgood experience from last year, isn't it? Where he kind of fell into roles due to injury. And the next time we thought he was going to lose his role, then another player got injured and Ryan Madison got injured and Bryce Cartwright got injured. And he just managed to stay in the team. I don't necessarily think that this is exactly what's happening to Curran. But I do think maybe the minutes have been a little bit inflated. He's their best four. He's their best four. And that that includes Jacob Preston, who I rate very highly. But he's their best forward. So I think I think 45 minutes at the worst, which is like a 52 probably for him, but I'm pushing like 50 minutes. Like it's a tough one because, yeah, he's had great minutes. And if you didn't pay attention, he'd be a slam dunk by. But if you look at it, I mean, Farmer saw he missed the entire game. Uh, Addo Carr missed pretty much 45 minutes of, of round one, which forced uh, Salmon to play in the centers, which obviously then opened up a, a, a middle spot for him. So his minutes for the last couple of weeks have been 63, 63 58. 58. Yeah. I think that's probably five minutes inflated. And, and I mean, he got 76 last week, but he got, uh, was it two line breaks, sis? Two line breaks, sis. Two. So still 60, 60 yeah. BP, which is still great. Which, yeah, awesome. Um, I mean, is okay, this, let's... Is this, is this the week? Like, because we're sitting here looking at a minus eight break even. You know, if he scores 60 again, it's going to be 50 points over BE. You know, probably looking at a 45k price rise. It's going to take him up to you know 480. Uh, I can't do math. 470. And at that stage, you're like, okay, well, I'm now paying 47 for a maybe, maybe a 58. It's getting dicey. I think this is the week you've got to move. Good, good comment in the chat here from Fisher. The SC notes on Curran call him the best Bulldogs forward, so that means he's got to be confirmation for the duel. And and so that kind of kind of I guess moves into my next point being, if we are confident. That he know that we know that he's going to get the front row forward jewel. He is the buy this week, but there unfortunately is absolutely no confidence that he's going to get this because he's come off the bench. In every yeah, you game. can't. You can't. And he's also come off the bench for injury as well, and that was yeah. a huge. I know I've said it a million times, but that was a huge sticking point for Cotter last year. Sangster came out and said, "We are not giving Cotter jewel because he has played him due to injury." I would be buying current off the back that he's a two RF. I wouldn't be hedging your bets and saying that I'm buying him because he's going to become a front row forward because then that just ruins everything for you. The question then becomes, do you go current? Do you go KPP? Because KPP is, you know, 70K cheaper. But then uh, KPP also is dealing with the Lucas sitting on the bench. Is Lucas on the bench this week? Sorry, ex- extended. my apology. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a tough decision. I think in terms of like just safe a safe pick, He's had 51 in base for the last two weeks. And even if his minutes drop back, you say maybe five minutes and he plays instead of 58, he plays maybe 52, 53. You're going to get probably 45 as a bare minimum score and he might find an attacking stat. We know we're talking about Josh Curran here. He's not a meat and potatoes footballer. The guy can find an attacking stat. Uh, And obviously he is the best, he is the best forward, uh, maybe questionably around Max King, but it's it, they've been leaning on him the last two weeks and it's very clear that they will continue to lean on him. So Aldo will lean on him to make sure that they get the drop done up the middle. So I don't mind him. I think I he's know. safer yeah, than KPP. Yeah. And, and I, I'm probably leaning more towards him. Um, shout out to Matrix who's in the chat and said, buy Curran because he is an effing unit. So that's also a great reason to buy. Um, 
buying someone based purely off the fact of their uh, unit measurements, you know, also great. <laughs> Moving over to the Titans. Now, no Jaden Campbell, no David Oh, Feeder. actually, sorry. Can I stop you there? Oh, we did yes. not talk about Luke Metcalf. Oh. Uh, and that would be, sh- Matrix would be pulling his hair out if he was on the show. This is what happens sure. when Matrix isn't here to pull us up on, on Luke Metcalf. Option or not option? Quick chat. No, I I hate saying this. I hate saying this, but just find the extra money for Brooks. Oh, hang on. Let me just mark this section. No, please don't quit this. Up. This is going to be awful. <laughs> All right, look, let Metcalf's great. Don't buy him off the back that he's a goal kicker. Don't buy Pappenhausen off the back that he's going to pick up goal kicking. Like, buy Metcalf for what he is. But I would, I would rather just take, I'd rather just take Brooks. Mm, yeah, Agent Cheese, I've clipped it. Don't worry, I'm all over that shit. Um, uh, oh it's goodness, no, I've exposed myself. For Bro- it's boost for Brooks now in the chat. So look Brooks. what you've done. Um, do, do, yeah, do you agree? Or do you think? Yeah, yeah, like- I, I do agree. I, I think for me, look, we've got Dillbags and, and Galvin for the majority. I think that's a pretty popular combo. Some people have. Um, Kyle Flanagan. Uh, I mean, I'd probably, if you ask me to pick between the two, we're picking uh, a guy that's got inflated points at the moment because he's goal kicking when he normally doesn't. So when SJ gets that back, you're going to see a decrease. This um, chat, it's just, it's popping off, isn't it? <laughs> Boost for Brooks everywhere. Um, yeah. But I, no, I, I like, prefer- I prefer Brooks as an option, which makes me sick. So we, we let's quickly move on. Let's yeah, let's move on to the Titans because yeah, no Jaden Campbell, no David Fafita. Da- Jaden Campbell, I'm not so surprised about, but Fafita, he was pegged for a round three return, and we're not seeing him. So, uh, if you're a Tino owner, you've got to be pretty happy about that because he's going to take the lion's share of that workload. We see Kaukini come back, which I'm loving for my fantasy team. I get to hold on to him for one more week. Uh, but the big inclusion, probably number six, Kieran Foran, having an impact not only on Tanner Boyd but also the number twelve in both for more. Now, if you've held Fermor through the bye, you've got to be happy to see him named at six. Apart from that, man, there's not a whole lot to talk about here from the Titans. I've, I've got no real interest in uh, in looking at them. I do see that uh, Kenan Palace has been dropped to the bench in favor of Tino at 10 and Jermaine Jolliffe at 13, which is uh, an interesting shout when you've got someone like Isaac Louis on the bench or Aaron Clark. Well, I mean, Kenan Palace here also is terrible. So that's completely justified why he's been dropped to the bench. <laughs> Um, the only relevant talking point for the Titans becomes when Fafida is back, what side is he on? Yes. And if he's on Foran's hip, we're starting to talk about him and we're starting oh, to decide I'm, I'm moving my, just pay up and I'm get ripping, him. I'm ripping apart. Like, on, and that's yeah. not joking. Like, I would I would rip apart for, for a left-hand side Fafida. Uh, a right-hand side I've got no interest in, but if he's playing off Foran's hip, absolutely. But that's probably all the relevancy for the Titans. If you've held Fermor through this period of time, then uh, cool. Apart from that, not a whole lot to talk about here. Uh, moving on, we're going to go down to, is it Cogra? No, we're, we're staying in Sydney. We're not going to Cogra, unfortunately. Staying in Sydney for the Dragons taking on the Cowboys. Dragons have had a fair bit of changes, mate. We see Jacob Little out and Francis Molo out, and then a host of changes coming in. We see Jack DeBellin move to the front row forward rotation, pairing Blake Laurie and Tom Eisen, who's playing at 13, with Lucci and Sua uh, lining up in the starting side. Now, Lucci, I expect to be playing on the left. I see Sua moving to the right-hand side. They spoke about that in the yeah. preseason. Uh, interesting that Connor Molhuizen stays at 14, with Jesse Marski coming into play nine, with Mick Molo, Raymond Fatala Mariner, and the AE Nightmare himself, Viliami Fafida, playing 17. You'd be very upset as a Viliami <laughs> Fafida. <laughs> Yeah, you'd be very upset about that. The VC almost becomes irrelevant now, but for those people, unfortunately. Um, I I mean, shout out to Phil, who I think is maybe one of the only Jacob Little uh, big fans out there. Um, it's basically, the word was that Jacob Little is by far and away a better option than Danny Levi. And I still believe it, but you've got to actually play some football to make some cash, unfortunately. And it looks like Little misses this week. So, Sorry, that's twenty. That, that that's projected twenty four tries this season. Danny Levi, we're talking about here. Twenty seven. Oh no, twenty four. Because he's twenty four. He's not, he's not yeah, track for twenty four tries. That's that, that'll put him up there. Um, but yeah. So, Tom Eisenhuth. Yes, he's a nice price. It's his last week before his you know price is going to move. Yeah. And he he played really well in round one. I didn't watch the game in round two, so I'm just quickly looking up his his price. So, three hundred and fifty six k available at two RF center wing. Break even of two, 
off the back of a great game in round one, a 59 in 60 minutes. Only played 38 minutes last week. Now, I probably think that's that's reverting to his mean. I think that's sort of whereabouts he sits, especially with this, you know, rotation. RFM, mate, he's a perfect example as to why you wait a week, isn't it? He looks great yeah. in round one. I'll tell you who also is a perfect example of why you wait a week. It's uh, Zach Labor. Hey, oh, I thought it was um, Keith. I thought it was Kay Flanagan, but we're going to throw some lay butt shade, are we? Jeez. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Had to get it in. It's been fucking 40 minutes and I haven't done any of it yet. So oh, we'll, get got there. It. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Just just let me let me uh, put shit on everyone else before I get shit put on me. Um, yeah. But no, look. <laughs> I agree, Eisenhuth. though, on the Eisenhuth thing. Yeah, like, I mean, look, he's better in the middle of the park. Definitely not relevant on an edge. But there's just no certainty around the role there. So he's definitely not a look. The, the jewel is amazing and probably lo- kind of lured a few people in. Um, but yeah, not a look, not a chance. Well, um, he's, he's sitting at, oh goodness, ownership wise, we're sitting at 6% of teams, which is kind of high. Yeah. 8,300 teams. Shit. Yeah. That's, that's way that's, more that's, than I thought he'd have. I was, and I'd say all of those people are in the top 15K. So, 100%. That'd be an adjustment. Um, as for the Dragons looking for a bounce back, if you went early on Lomax, I wouldn't be upset. Lomax scored 45 points in dual base. In a side that got thumped. So yeah, I think still think Lomax is fine. I'm not running out of my way to buy him, but if you have him, I wouldn't be panicking. For yeah. the cows, uh backline lines up as per. We're gonna skip over Zach Labor. We'll come back to him. Uh the forwards, Lolo name to start. No idea what his rotation is looking like. You know, these knee. He could play don't 50. Try and guess that. No. Uh, he could play, 50, play 50, he could play 10. Yeah, no one knows. And I don't think they know game to game. It's going to also be based on a lot of different factors within the game. And they're going to look at how much of a lead they have, whether they need to risk him. They talked about the degenerative cartilage in his knee, I think it was, on on Magic Sponge. Yeah, um, and they said they said that that's not an issue. Like, it's not the degenerative cartilage. Like, Teddy's got that. Most NRL players are going to have cartilage that's been sort of rotted away. It's the fact that he had the meniscus removed, and the meniscus is that shock absorber, which um, James and Brian both explained quite well. But also that push bike theory, mate. We saw him in the push bike going up in the preseason. We should have clocked. We should have clocked. So, mm-hmm. um, no, look, it's the fact that he had that meniscus cleaned out and removed last year. That's a, a big thing. And also just age and how high. Like Lolo was running for 250 minutes a game for three years. So it's a, a big stress. But the biggest talking point is number 11. Kiyokini Fuyaki, 290K, I want to say, off the top of my head. Uh, break even of 21. But the ever long, ever thorn in our side, Jack Kaseki, sitting there at number 17, is Finifuiaki a guy. I think he's got enough upside that we can wait a week and just see what Todd Payton does because it's 2024 and you have a bench of Jake Granville and Jack Kaseki. That doesn't fill me with a whole lot of joy. Granville's playing in the middle, though. I'm not really overly worried about Granville. Oh, I just think it's a putrid um, bench. <laughs> oh, it's it's rubbish. It's terrible. When you've got guys like McKaylee on the on, on the extendants, like what's going yeah, get on? McKaylee in the, yeah, get him some game time. But I, I mean, I, I'm coming up with the decision on you know, and everybody needs to go. What are we doing with Lukey? The the problem is where Lukey Truth is, but he was only like 10 percent owned. So it's not like everybody's thinking, what do I do with Lukey? Most of the people don't have this problem. It but shows we do. you that, it shows you that we that we are in a Twitter circle, isn't it? Like because I feel like 100%. Lukey on Twitter is like 80 percent owned. Yeah, yeah, that's right, and that's why we're 50 and 70 thousandth. Because not many people own Lukey. Um, but I, I have the decision of whether I go to Kai Pierce Paul this week, mm-hmm. considering I'm hoping he gets 80 or majority minutes. And then, or I could go down even further and go to Fina Fuyaki, who should probably get, what, 60 minutes as a worst case scenario? Yeah. And then it just comes down to the work rate. So at, at a 21 break even, like if we can get a 50, we're not expecting a monster price rise. Probably be able to pick him up for 320 next week. And I still think, yeah. you know, that's fine. You can probably wait. Yeah, but then the question becomes like, how long are we going to wait? Because after probably two or three weeks, it's not worth it because Lukey's back anytime soon. So there is another option at 260k in the two RF that we can look at as well that we'll touch on in a couple of games. But Finifuiaki, I'm happy to let this one go through to the keeper and just see what happens before we do go moving mountains. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's a fair call. Point. I think we can definitely have another look, and it it comes down to. Just wanting to see what this role looks like. You said Gashevsky on the on the bench is is a nightmare. Um, if he wasn't there, I think we'd be able to kind of lock and load on yeah, Finafuiaki and know he's going to get eighty. He was McKaylee, lock and load. Um, now, question becomes: If your name isn't Payne Haas, Adam Fenor Blake, or Tino Fa'asu and Malawi, is R. Cotter the man at five hundred and fifty k? And why is the answer yes? 
It's yeah. For me, the minutes uh, there was a big uptick in minutes. Was it fifty five, fifty six minutes last week? Um, so round round one we played fifty two. Last week we played sixty five minutes, and the PPM 65. went from the PPM went from point uh, nine to one point one. Is that, that a golden that, point game though? It so, was, but it was only it was only it was only three minutes in the golden point. So we're looking at a sixty two minute performance. Okay, and, and that's probably, plenty for me at front row. Probably something like a sixty eight point sixty six point i think that's inflated but if cotter's giving me 60s at the position that it's at right now uh, amazing he's got 38 break even at 542k so even if he does go if you can't get in this week and if he does go for a 60 we're not looking at a massive price spike probably only 20k so you're still going to be able to pick him up for sub 580 which i still think is fine like he's not presenting massive value he's no terrell may but i just think he's got a clean run until origin you can break up with him then have a nice clean mutual split and you know go your separate ways. I think he's the best front row forward that isn't one of those top three premiums. Yeah, I agree. Um I think if you're not going and spending up, you need I think Cotter's the next guy. Or then yes. you go down to Flagler. I think that's your next best option next week, which is also a consideration. And I, I hate kind of saying it because we were poo pooing Flagler a fair bit in the preseason, but he's come out in his first two games and, and we're gonna put our hand up and say that maybe we were wrong on his work rate. Um, which is which is fine. Um, it, it just means do we save the 80k or the 100k? Because Flegler obviously on the buy this week means that we can kind of delay his price rise for another week and we can jump on it 475 next week, which is great because we could save 100k between Flegler and Cotter. So the question becomes, does is that worth maybe the what 10 points less that you're gonna well, get from him? The thing I probably have Flegler from what I've seen now, probably somewhere at around a 53. Scored 51 yeah. last week, but that was in a side that absolutely trounced the Dragons and he probably didn't have to do a whole lot. Um, and yeah, Cotter maybe at like a 61, 62. So yeah, I mean, I'm going to own one of them next week. I know that we, you know, we, we reveal our trades on Inside Unlimited, but I'll definitely be owning one of the two next week. It's just a case of yeah. which one. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But that's all for that game. Uh, moving into a game that I do not want to speak about, but I'm going to have to. It's the West Tigers at Leichhardt taking on the Sharks. Now, the Tigers have Stafford Toa out with that high-grade syndesmosis. So we see Solomon Fatape come in, but we also see the new recruit Justin Olam come in. Brett Naden has been named on the extended bench, floating in the wings. Fatape, prime candidate for a wait. Wait and see. Oh, yeah, we get a free look. Um, it doesn't really make sense at the moment to jump early, but in saying that, how long is Stafford Toa injured? About eight weeks. Okay. So there's the every chance now, yeah, that, that he locks that down. The problem becomes Brent Naden floating. Because yeah, he's he's, he's, back yeah, so there's every chance he might. He, he's more than capable of playing at centre. So does he steal that spot or do they stick with the young fella? That's, that's the question. Benji has shown his hand a little bit in terms of leaning into the young guys in this squad. So, yeah, yeah we we, uh, we need to look. You can't jump early. We talk, about, we talk about young guys. We've also got Justin Matamua and Alex Lobb named in the extended benches as well. So I'm not a Charlie Staines guy. I don't think you are either as Tigers fans. I'd be happy to see Lobb on the wing, given a, given a shot. Um, and Junior Chippo is obviously not here next year, so no harm in trying something new. But the big thing, the halves combination. Lucky Yavin retains his spot at six, which is well-deserved for me. I think he played outstanding, sure. played much better than Bud. Caesar, I'm happy to give him the pass. He was told to come on at a very, very bad point of the game and yeah. just couldn't get into the game. He's your experienced seven. He's the guy that you brought in to be the seven. So happy to see this combination run around for a couple of weeks. The forwards, Stefano Utoya Kamano and David Klemmer, uh, they're fine. Apicaris out as per. Isaiah Papali'i, we'll chat with him shortly. But Fenua Bolle comes in for Alex Seifarth. We see Sullivan drop to 14, and uh, that's that's pretty much all she wrote. A couple of Tigers players to talk about here. We've obviously chatted about Solomon Fata'ape. We've also chatted about Lockie Galvin. Um, I don't think he's a must-have this week, but I think give it a week and, and look at picking him up. If you started with him, well done. If you didn't, then you've got a perfect way to piss off Jacob Gavin. Uh, Jacob Gavin? Jacob Gagai. Uh, you can move Gagai out. You can slot Strange down into your center wing. You can bring in Galvin, and you don't lose money there. So great move for you next week. But Safarth, let's put our hands up here. We got this one wrong. wrong. Yeah. We we thought that yeah, it improved role. 
good preseason. Coach obviously loved him that we'd see some improvement, but he is just the same old Alex Saifarth. He, he had an improved role for 13 minutes. Uh, and then seven and missed tackles in those 13 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't good. But um, no, but let's, let's, let's just get off. That's a trend for him. Um, unfortunately, we were hoping there would have been some sort of improvement in the preseason, and there was not. Um, he, he is quite loose in terms of giving away a lot of penalties and errors and, and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, not not ideal for him and his game. But uh, if Noah Bale gets his crack at lock now, which I, I don't think he's a lock. I think he's a prop. I think he's definitely not a guy we need at lock. I think Justin Matamura is still the pick as a Tigers fan. Um, I don't know what we're doing, not giving him a crack. He's pissed someone off. But keep an eye out for him. He, he's yeah. going to be a guy that will play some football at some point this year. Man, I'm getting huge Sean Wall vibes. Like, how many years are we going to be sitting yeah. here saying, oh, yeah, no, he's, he's good, he's good. Um, all right, so safe half out. Uh, let's chat iPad because he's 568K. Pumped out a 71 in base power. Finished with a 67 because he had some negatives. He had some missed tackles and some penalties. But 71 base power in 80 minutes. That included five offloads, four of them effective, two tackle busts, seven runs over eight meters, 13 runs total. And a team that got throttled. In a team that got an oost, and he wasn't even on Gavin's uh, Gavin side, so it's not like he had to make a million tackles. That was Bateman's side. Is iPad back? I need to see it again. I need to see it again. Okay. I okay. I, did you jump on him last year at all? No, I didn't. I jumped on Bateman for a bit, but <laughs> Matrix and I both did at the same time, and we Poor thought, job. "Fuck this! It's he's back." Yeah, uh, Zay Papali is back. Parramatta iPad is back. Um, and he was not, he was not back. Um, that you've got to proceed with caution because he is playing for a team that has an orange Jersey and that are not very good. And unfortunately when he was at the eels and he was outside Mitchell Moses, he had one of the best roles in the game. And now he, he doesn't, he's got to do the hard work, but the base power is fantastic. And it's definitely it's something I'm right. looking at. He got some move. It got some blood flowing downstairs when I, when I had a look at it, but he's definitely, and then you looked at the score and we were like, Oh, Damn. Oh, I don't, mate, I've I've detached myself from Tiger. Like that's the thing. People, I haven't after, yet. I'm not at that point. After, after every game, I always get messages on Instagram. People are like, oh man, I'm so sorry. I'm like, bro, I'm done. Like I did. <laughs> I've yeah, been through it all. I've been through the Robert Louis. I've been through the Brayton Astors. I've been through the John Morrises. I've been wow. through the Elijah Taylors, the Russell Packers. I'm the done. Scott I'm Princes. Kidding. Don't you remember the Scott Princes? They were the oh, days, mate. Bring back John Scandalous. <laughs> Yeah, he's, somewhere, he's around somewhere. Gareth Ellis. Uh, oh, what was the winger's name that was a stud? Which year are we talking? I've, oh, I've like, lots like, of disappointment. Like, like, like 2008, like 2010. Oh, fuck. Uh, um, he, he, had the, he was a, the, the dark fella, the winger. Lottie Takiri. No, no. Not Lottie, <laughs> not watch Lottie Takiri. Oh, it's, okay, someone in the chat, you know who I'm talking about. So he's, his last name starts with a T. You'll, 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 we'll you'll find me. Anyway. Anyway, um, yeah, so IPAP, I'm keen on. I'm happy to wait a week. But let's chat uh, Samuel Lafainu because he looks great. He looks really, really good. I know we had the try, but he still had like 50. Ah, oh, there it is. Teddy Yellow Tuiaki. Tuiaki. That was, that's, uh, yeah, he okay. was a freak. Absolutely sad, man. I've been through it all. It was good. Anyway, um, Samuel Lafainu played big minutes, looked really good. Huge raps on him in the preseason. Young kid. Scored a try, which inflated the score, but without the try, still scored 50. Price at 270 or 257 or 260. Like he's a guy that's firmly on the watch list. For sure. Firmly. And the, the beauty of it is we get another look because his price doesn't increase until next week. So that's fine. We can look again. Um, but yeah, he's absolutely there. Is he dual position, mind you? No, is he no, still- he's just to RF, which is frustrating. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's tough. Uh do you see maybe potentially in the future him starting at prop and we might be able to look at a dual at some point this season? What, the the Aldi Josh Curran? Yep. That's what I'm here for. Because I tell you what, no. David Clemmer playing 33 minutes ain't it. David Clemmer's a pillow. What an absolute bust. Mate, yeah, no half problem. our side's bust. Anyway, Samuel Lefanu, not a guy that I'm going to tell you to buy this week, but definitely keep an eye out because he could feature in our buy, hold, and sells next week. For the Sharkies, they line up as per. We have Britton Nicola out for two weeks. We see Billy Burns make a resurgence into the squad mm-hmm. with Jack Williams starting. So shout out there. Uh, we'll touch on captaincy, but it's very, very hard to pass up uh, number seven, Nico Hines, against the Tigers, who just got absolutely trounced by Jamal Fogarty and Jordan Rappiner and <laughs> Danny Levi and yeah, the child. Yeah, we'll, we'll save the Nico chat, I think, for captains. Um, but, I, I mean, Royce the choice apparently has become the choice for the bench again. 
He's, he's, he's back, back after his illness. Um, <laughs> definitely not back in our super coach sides. I can't touch any of these forwards. I mean, even Cam McInnes is getting, you know, David Clemmer minutes. So it's like, I, I can't touch any of these, any of these middles. So uh, Craig Fitzgibbon can go firmly in the Ricky Stewart category of in the bin. Uh, Sunday afternoon up at uh, Comic Parramatta taking on Manly. Should be a great game to watch this one. Uh, the only outs we see is Bailey Simpson with that HIA, as we've discussed. And Morgan Harper's moved to a wing. And uh, yeah, Tom Travoyevich not going to get a captaincy tag from me this week, which terrifies me. I'm still not against it. I'm not against just foregoing Nico and um, and just going Tom Travoyevich because him on a Sunday afternoon is is Oof. scary against there's Morgan points Harper. To be scored. Yeah, there's points to be scored at Combank too. But um, Blaze Talangi comes in and, and replaces Simmonson in this one, which... He's got big raps, Talangi. Um, yes. I, I work with a guy that is the strength and conditioning coach for the Eels last year, and he's moved to the Rabbitohs this year. So um, he says that he's very he's got big raps at the Eels, Blaze Talangi. So natural center. They've had him playing fullback in cup. Um, mm-hmm. So he gets a chance to show his skills at center. So I'm excited to see him this week. Obviously, he won't. there's no relevance in Supercoach, but it'll he'd be an interesting look because Simonson will come straight back into this team. Um, obviously with Brendan Hands being dropped, you oh, know, the, the Joey Lussick train is is all aboard. Has Brad Arthur now become our favorite coach? He's gone from one of our most hated to our favorite. Do we need to Ricky do a public Stewart. apology to Brad Arthur? He's replaced Ricky Stewart in the in the bin category. But yes, uh, looking at number 14, uh, Luca Moretti does not strike fear into me. <laughs> all <laughs> systems go for Joey Lussick. Choo-choo. Get around it. Yep. Um, yeah, I think you have to. Of- I think he becomes nearly a must. Yeah, a lot of a lot of boost, a lot of boost chat for Lusick, and I'm all aboard it because yes, yep. Levi will make you some cash, and yes, Levi is going to definitely score 24 tries this year, but he may only average 35 points doing it, so uh, not something that I I can get behind holding. So I'm all aboard Lusick, and yes, I am a very apologetic to you, uh, Brad Arthur. Um, in my memes of the week, which is fast becoming some people's favorite posts I do, which is sad because it takes me the least amount of time to do. Um, I put in a little one of Captain Holt saying the party is over. Uh, is the party over or did we overreact? Because he did. Uh, I had some very passionate Parramatta fans in my DM saying, uh, please don't be so hateful to the party because he did have to play at center last week. The party needs a break, mate. It <laughs> needs a break every now. You can't just bend her every weekend. You, you need a break. You need a breather. Um, I don't know. You know, you've got to restock the fridge. You've got to restock the fridge. Yeah, you've got to restock the fridge. You've got to make sure. I mean, ask Matrix, like the, the king of the piss. You, you can't just get, actually, he can, but most people say, can't he, just get on the piss every single weekend. You've got to take a break. So, for, you know, he's restocking the fridge. He's getting all of the, you know, all of the decorations and shit ready for the backyard again. And, and it's going to start again Friday night and it's going to go until Monday morning. All right. So, so par- party back on this week. Also, yeah, Party's I. I partied very hard in my younger days. I don't drink now, as people know, but I'm very terrified for Magic Round with you and Matrix. It's going to be a <laughs> very, very big one. Um, moving on to the Sea Eagles, we have uh, Tommy Talao has been named on the extendeds, I believe. Yeah, he has. So he had that heel dislocation. Now, when we talk about, oh, I'm going to sound like physio here, so just go listen to the Magic Sponge. But he was talking about um, the ankle dislocation not being the same as what Pappenhausen had, where it's like the clean dislocation of the you know, major ankle joint that you would consider it was a sort of a slipped heel so not a huge recovery for that one thankfully but for them yeah number one tom travoyevich he terrifies me at four o'clock on a sunday in a day game like at, at combank on a fast track i know nico because i've got nowhere to loop this is the problem mm. like if i go nico vc turbo c i would have to trade in enough and i just i don't know like i'm really terrified of, of travoyevich this week do you okay? Is there logic? I mean, there's no actually no. There's not. There's not even an ask. There's no logic to fade Nico. But could you? I mean, could you potentially, if you had the nuts on you, could you looking at Nico and he's got seventy and fifty or forty or whatever it was? Can you just go VC Trell and then C on Turbo Sunday mm-hmm. Arvo four Can't o'clock? If you if you found out a way to to VC a fullback into seeing a fullback, please tell me. Oh fuck! You can't. Okay. That's all right. Disregard. <laughs> for me, you got me it's excited to, there for a sec. For me, it's down to two because, like, I'm probably like people know I'm a Lukey owner. I'm, I'm holding Lukey until the last minute that I have to trade him out, so I have a, a yeah. loop option. Yeah, I'm um, the same. If, 
if I was to buy Latrell Mitchell for KP, which I still you know, haven't decided on, I'd VC him into C into C um, Hines. But man, Turbo looks Turbo, Turbo scares me. Like really, like I I think he could have gone massive in round one. I think he could have gone massive last week. It just didn't fall. And you've got you know a young kid in the centres and Morgan Harper. You know, 150 points to half time fame. Morgan Harper on the wing, like oof, rough times with with. Tell us how cooler and Ben Trevojevic just staring down your your eyes. Um, yeah, rough times. But anything else, nothing to talk about for the Manly Seagulls. No. Last game of the round, Mr. Brain. It is down here in my beloved Newcastle. Uh, the Knights taking on the Storm, a Storm side without their six and seven. But the Knights, there is some talking points because, as we discussed, Greg Mazu outs for a prolonged period of time. And that sees Tom Jenkins come onto the wing with Anari. Sorry, it sees Anari Twala come onto the wing with Tom Jenkins as his wing partner. We got some word today that Hastings has been dropped. Now, Cogger in at seven. Interesting. We see Jaden Braley named it at 14. Interesting. And we see Dylan Lucas on the extended bench with one KPP, my love interest, named at 12. So, a lot of moving parts here at the Knights, mate. I don't know what to take of it. The one thing I know is that if you have Marjorie, it's probably a move on. Last game of the round two, mind you. Yeah, it's... No uh, changes can be made. The issue for me is I currently have KPP in my team as a replacement for Lukey, and I might need to pivot at some point this week. We're going to have to keep our ears to the ground. The good thing, Barry too, he's all over that kind of stuff in Newcastle. So if you don't follow him on Twitter, it might be worth a follow because he'll probably leak some sort of news at some point. I feel like he's got an anti KPP agenda because you just need to, whenever you ask him, it's like, nah, he's on the bench, on the bench. He that doesn't rate him. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, last game of the round, which isn't ideal for KPP. And I'm very happy to just, I don't want to fade him because he's running up against uh, Joe Chan, who, you know, issues defensively at times and, and Tyrant Wishart. So that's a, a pretty juicy combination to run at. And many times last week, he, he runs, he sort of spins. And gets the arm free, and no one's following with him. So I feel yeah. like as the season goes on, people are just going to be like pushing KPP hard. You'll get bulk try assists. Um, but it's a good matchup oh. for him this week. All right, here we go. What I could do. So I've got KPP at the moment in for Luki. What I could potentially do. We're going to know one day out. They're going to do the one day cut. Yes. So six fifteen. Potentially, Lucas gets cut twenty four hours out, and I can then if if let's just say for instance Lucas comes in on the bench and replaces Jed Cartwright, which is every chance of happening. Mm-hmm. I can then go KPP straight across to Isaiah Papali'i because the Tigers don't play until 7.35 on Saturday night. Goodness me, that's that's arousing. The problem is, what do you do if you hold KPP and then Lucas is like, he's still suffering a couple of concussion symptoms, but then just starts next week. Like, I'd, I'd hate that. I'd hate that next week. So I'm, I'm yeah. for me, I think KPP's break even isn't even that good because he didn't no, score... Like he scored well in round one because of his minutes. He scored forty and forty, but it's he 12. only scored. Yeah, so it's not even that that great. Like you'd have to score like seventy to go up, you know, sixty k. You can definitely and wait. I, I'm pretty pretty keen to wait. I wouldn't rush on him. I'd rather just, I'd rather gamble on Finn Yufiwiaki because you know the role's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. I, I, so I've got three hundred and eighteen k in the bank, so I can pretty much go to anybody. I'm trying to keep the cash for a Lenu upgrade next week. And ideally I'd like to get to Cotter. Um, so I'd like to try and keep at least 250 K in the bank to be able to make that move. But I do have the flexibility to go up if I need to, uh, or go down if I need to and free up even more cash. So, um, that, that might be the play. It could be, uh, I, I could be running Finna Love that. Love that. Uh, so yes, we see no Cam Munster still. Jerome Hughes also accepted that suspension. So I think he's out for a week. So he'll be back yep. next week. We see everything line up as per you would expect, but with Tyrant Wishard coming in. And Sua Fa'alongo, I read that he got rushed into the squad, but I've been lied to, so he's not there. But we see Kane Bradley, a preseason hero of our hearts, been named at 14. Um, and yeah, I, I'm so excited. I actually didn't look at the Storm team list because it's very boring every week. I thought I read that Sua Fa'alongo was coming into the 14, so I've been... I mean, hoodwinked. Um, but still, when Nelson asks for Solomona, but everything else lines up pretty much as per. Yep. Yeah, not really much else to mention in this one, um, except it might be part of our bet for this week. Maybe, maybe some spastic has decided to take the Knights with half the, uh, the, the, the 
Storm with half their spy missing, so we'll uh, we'll get to that one. But that's the preview. Um, that's the preview done. That's it. Well, we'll uh, let's move into captains then, because there's a fair few questions in the comments. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, captain. Now, VC options this week. Um, I, I know you've you've talked about delaying your VC as as much as possible, potentially to be able to get to Nico, but it makes it pretty tricky to do because it's so late. Is the VC on SJ? A chance. Uh, we know he's not kicking goals, though. It's a little bit of a deterrent. It just it just rules you out of of, of Heinz, though, doesn't it? That's the only issue. Like, yep. I think you have to have some kind of tag on Heinz this this week. Also, I probably should proofread these notes more. I realize that you condensed the notes way more than what I did, and we've also skipped over buy, hold, and sell. So we'll round back up to that as well. Yeah, um, like but yeah, I don't know. Like, what if he's not kicking again this week? What if this quad's still like an issue? Yeah, it, it ruins your VC option in a really juicy week when you've got Nico. Um, yeah, it, I think it rules you out completely. But the, the thing is, a lot of people don't have Nico. Like, it's not like he's 70% owned. You know, he he's still only like 30% owned. Like, he think he's Because I just yeah. think he needs to be higher than what he is. Um, I don't know. Like, if you own Nico, I, just, I can't look past anything that doesn't have a tag on him. But then, the, the, like, the C is the big thing because, like, people are looking at, you know, Trell. People are looking at, um, obviously, Turbo. I think Turbo's got a brilliant matchup as well. Captaincy hasn't been straightforward this year at all. Nope. Um, interesting couple of questions coming in from Tommy Leesman here. Would Would you VC Hines and see Turbo if it meant dropping Burbo and probably getting Safarth as an AE? Oh, dropping as in like dropping him from you. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I think I think the, the, the ceiling on Turbo is just astronomical this week uh, and the ceiling on Hines is astronomical. I was discussing this with you, Brano, like, I can loop and drop uh, a Sam Hughes, Sam Hughes, a uh, Liam Henry, and pick up an AE. And I'm probably not losing a whole lot out of that. So, I mean, Safarth, if he can get you 24, 25 points, like there is some wonderful um, calculators out there. I know that the SC Stats website do a great calculator where you can punch in what your VC scored, what you think your captain scores, the play that you're dropping. So, if you think Burbo's getting a 40, you can put that in. And you can put in what you think that safe earth will get, and it will spit you out whether it's a profitable loop or not. So, people also forget that, mate. I think people look at like their captain getting 110 and go, "I've got to take that," but then they don't factor in you could be losing points by dropping another player. Like your captain only has to score like 75 points to make that 110 loop like losing. So, um, definitely do your 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 calculations before then. But mate, for me, like I'm looking at Drinky, I'm looking at Turbo, I'm looking at Heinz. Like I just those are the three that really stand out to me. I'm looking at like a, a Trell, if you're an owner as well. Like I've got a narrative brewing, you know, Trell's been bashed in the media all week up against his old club, standing up, like got a bit of a narrative. I'm, I'm but, following this narrative. Yeah, I'm, I'm get, around it. Well. get around it. Get around it. Um, as well. But the Cowboys versus the Dragons, man, Hamiso just tore them apart. No disrespect to Hamiso, but he's no Scott Drinkwater. Like, you know who, for, for the NBA fans out there, I'm sure there's a, a lot in the chat. Um, you know who Trell reminds me of? Trey Young, where he just loves people hating him. You know, when yeah. Trey Young goes to he goes and plays the Knicks and he just loves being booed and he loves fucking yeah, getting yeah, into yeah. the fans. As if Latrell Mitchell, every single time he takes a goal kick, has a look back at the fans of the opposition and likes just ripping into him whenever he makes a kick. Like Watch he this. just thrives Detroit. on that shit. Thrives no, on this, being the villain. I don't think this game's a defensive masterclass. I think this game's gonna have some points in it. Uh, yeah, and I, hopefully I those, so well. and hopefully those points are twelve offloads by Terrell May. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. Um, but I, yeah, so I think I'm looking at Terrell VC purely also just Pap. in terms of the way my team's structured. Pap, Pap as well. Like if you're a Pap owner against the Knights, it's not the worst matchup in the world either. Um, but my my eyes are, are drawn to seven thirty five on Saturday, and uh, eight, and four or five on Sunday. I just and you won't won't be wearing your Tigers jersey for that game. I need to buy one. Do you own one anymore? No, no I grew out of mine. No, I stopped caring enough because we sucked. But, you know, I'll jump back on the bandwagon when we become good in 2040. But no, I'm like, I don't know. Like, uh, I have to make a decision because, like, if I do decide to trade KP, my options are Teddy or Trell and they play very early. Do you think we can write a note to PBL and just ask him to, you know, move, move this uh, Tigers Sharks game to like, Four o'clock on a Thursday. <laughs> I'm sure he'll do that. He seems like a very reasonable bloke. So, 100. Yeah, I'm still that. unsure on captains myself because, like, there's three matchups I'm looking at, and I can only have two of them. And 
the the two main matchups that I want won't let me loop. So it's like, do I is it worth bringing in enough? And it's probably not. So yikes. Yeah. Yeah, no, just, it sounds so crazy to fade Nico versus the Shark Tigers, but I'm also just terrified, like of not having anything on on Turbo. <laughs> it's going to be a tough watch, isn't it? When you don't. But in saying that, how well captained is Turbo going to be? Oh, what because are we looking at? Nico is going to be very well captained. I know he's not as well owned, but I think nearly everybody that owns Nico is going to captain him. Have a look. The beauty of paying for Supercoach Gold is you have these stats pretty handy. So we look is, all... no one really cares at this early in the fucking round. Everyone uh, does it at the last minute. Oh, really? Sure. Except, I, us, except us. I'm, I'm, locked, I'm locked in. So the most captain this round is Nathan. Cl- okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna filter this by coaches in the top ten percent. No disrespect to anyone outside of the top ten percent because I'm definitely outside you of know, that. Yeah, that's us, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. So Nathan Cleary is still the most popular captaincy uh, at twenty one point three percent. Did he play anyone good last week? Is that a, is that a carryover from last week, or are people actually looking at him? I reckon that's a carryover from last week. He played, played the Parramatta Parramatta. Eels last week. Yeah. Okay. So Nico Hines at thirteen point one percent. If we're looking at the most VC, uh, we're looking at Payne Haas, Latrell Mitchell, Reese Walsh, Tom Travojevic. That's not a, a good VC. But these guys, like yeah, you know, the Clearies, the Payne Haases, the Latrells, and the Walshes, they all make sense. So captaincy is still very spaced out. Like we haven't had a captaincy that's like 30 percent this year. It's all, all, all been very, very spaced out. So it shows you that the matchups are a little bit iffy. And I said to you, we were talking about this in the group chat. Like next year, for the first three rounds, Tino, here's your armband for my son. Just get me get me 75 yeah. points because I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. We talked about like there being less expensive football be played as well. Like yeah. you don't see the halves score massive any any real round in the first couple of rounds because they're still trying to find their combinations and stuff. So like, There's this narrative yeah. brewing... Narrative brewing that like Will Kennedy and Trindle are killing Hines, and I don't know someone else is killing someone. I can't remember who. Are we worried about Brooks? Because he's getting a lot of touches, but I think Turbo's still looking good. Turbo's still swinging. I nah look. I mean, when you are, we, we said that we love Brooks now, and we're like Brooks truthers. So I've got yeah, to kind of lean into always, this narrative a little bit. I've never, never, never doubted him. Ne- yeah, that's right. I'm no, I don't think so. I don't think I'm worried about him. I, I think, to be honest, I know that Brooks prefers to go short than go out the back. That's the only kind of issue that I have with the way that Brooks he's plays. Yeah. Maybe just he's, maybe he's giving it to the wrong Travojevic. Stop giving maybe. it to Ben. Yeah. Hitting top. Maybe we need to captain Ben. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, maybe it's captain Brooks. No, I was thinking of Gamble. Gamble killing Ponga as well, which seems to be happening a lot. Uh, let's move in. Oh, speaking of Ponga, let's move into buy, holds, and sells. We can do that. I was not prepared for you to say that. Give me a second. Hit, hit the stinger. Targets acquired. Uh, I heard that the last, the buy one is like killing people's ears on audio. So we've okay. moved to trade targets. So let's uh, let's talk buys for the rounds. Some pretty obvious ones. Joey Lusick, the first one. I think he is a must buy this week. Now that Brendan Hands has not been named on the bench, we're looking at a negative 51 break even. He will make you 100K this week with a 50. What if Luca Moretti comes on at halftime and just plays a bit of nine? Fuck off. <laughs> I'll delete that. That'll do me. I will say. A full time AFL player. Um, Kai Pierce Paul, look, he, he is a buy. Like, I'm not going to say no to him. I'm personally going to wait a week, but I think he's he's an absolutely fine downgrade. Um, we said him last week. If you, if you don't have Terrell May, what are you doing? What's doing? Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, and to be fair, he's only still 28% owned. So he is not massively well owned at, at this point in time. And I think. Maybe people wanted another week. Maybe they saw him named on the bench. And we've talked a lot about bench players versus starters and how you need to kind of change your mentality around that. But Terrell May is a must-have. I'll tell you what. I've got a lot of orange dots in my forward pack at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> got Liam, Liam Henry. Uh, Liam Henry. I got, I got Henry. I got May. Potentially Curran. Like, got a, got a lot of orange dots happening. It's probably too mm. many for my comfort zone. Um, Ronaldo Molotalo is a buy. Is that purely... Based off off the draw, because his draw is great. He plays the Tigers. He's also the second highest averaging super coach player. He hurt me. He hurt me so much. He hurt my feelings. He hurt my soul. Mate, he hurt me the physically. Week we, buy, week we will buy him. He'll go, he'll go 100, 100, 100. We're like, okay, cool. Let's jump on. He'll get six and Sione yep. Katoa. We'll go 100, 100, 100. And we're like, yeah. all right, well, maybe, maybe we'll get Sione Katoa. And then they'll both stink. Yeah. Always away. No, no. As soon as you move off him, uh, of Mulatalo, he'll be fine. And he'll go back to scoring hundreds. Um, I it, it, when I joke and I say he hurt me last year, he I did jump on him after he got 
uh, I think he averaged 95 over three rounds. Everyone jumped on. He got 26 um, for the next three, four rounds. So that that's just the way that it is. But Mulatalo is a rocks or diamonds kind of guy. But the thing is that they're playing the Tigers into the Raiders. And yes, the Raiders are 2-0. and And that's, that's all well and good. But do we see them continuing that? Are they still a nice matchup for someone like Mulatalo for the Sharks? Like... I feel like Mulatalo, negative 22 break even this week, could be a 700k guy in a couple of weeks if he gets a couple of a couple more scores and lead you up to a Val Holmes or something for the rest yeah. of in, into Origin. Also, are we uh, just overplaying this Tigers uh, Sharks matchup? I think last time the Tigers were at Leichhardt, they may have pulled off a uh, pretty good upset in the rain, if my memory serves me correct. Well, against a team that we're black from memory, that have won three comps in a row, like. Mm. I don't know, like, no. Nah, look, um, Trail Mitt. Now, the beauty of Trail Mitt is he has a hard sell date. Round seven is the perfect time to jump off. Yep. And not only can you jump off Trail Mitt, but you pick up Kalen Ponga, who gets a brilliant fixture swing with a team that maybe has found some form. You know, the Knights still suck. KP sucks. All right. Well, how about Reese Walsh against the Tigers, against the Raiders, against the Dolphins? Like, you've got plenty of options here. Trail Mitt, good draw, hard sell point, fullback roulette. You've got a couple of fullbacks with some high break evens. Trail Mitt, oh, he's uninterested. He doesn't do anything. Yeah, he still scores points, though. Did nothing round one, 110. Did nothing last week, 80. Trail Mitt, he, he pumps out tackle bus for fun. He goal kicks. I don't know, man. Like, oh, I'm, I'm buying into this Trail Mitt narrative of, like, he just wants to shut everyone up. The timing is right. The narrative is right. The draw till round seven is beautiful. You jump off him then and you ride into the sunset with one of these also, guys that are going to do could well. get suspended for six weeks after this game, though. Guaranteed. Almost almost a lock. Uh, but anyway, that's 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 fine. But I do like Troll Mitt. I think, I think he is probably one of the best buyers if you're going to sell Ponga. Now, the logic... Then we talk about, do you sell Ponga? So we'll talk about that very soon, but let's move on to the holds before we... <laughs> Mitchell Moses, first yeah. on the hold list. He was a sell last week, hold this week, and that's just, I think, a product of of the, the nature of it, isn't it? Like, if you decided not to sell last week, then, then why are you selling this week? Uh, he will get that goal kicking back. It's not going to be all on Gutho. But also, I th- I'm pretty sure that the Eels have a really nice uh, draw coming up. Obviously, Manly this week at Combank. I think there's going to be some points there. Then plays that uh, the team with uh, back-to-back wooden spoons next week. Plays the Raiders the week after that. Cowboys, Dolphins, Manly again at Four Pines. Then a buy in round nine. Um, you know, good sell-off point there because he, he does go into the Broncos, Storm, Rabbitohs, Sharks. So pretty good time to jump off in round nine. But I think if you've come this far, you just stick it out. I think also maybe with Dylan Brown, yeah, the draw isn't amazing, but I mean, round, th- well, as Matrix would say, um, his Kiwi accent makes him more appealing. Um, so the fact he's not going to play any state of origin, they only miss round 16 out of the t- three major buy rounds as well. So you, you probably could just hold. It's also, majority, like, but- rem- rem- remember, you don't need a halfback, or you need, so you don't need a 5 8. You just need 18 players, or 17 players. Sorry, 13 yeah. players. You just need 13. So it doesn't matter where you get them from. You're in AFL mode. Need 18. I am, I am 18, yes. Um, Harry Grant, mate. Maybe I'm just like a, a, an asshole, which, yes. But maybe I'm just like, maybe I'm just thick. Like, what am I not understanding with selling Harry Grant? Because I'm seeing a lot of people do it. Like, what has changed for people to sell Harry Grant? Like, people, the only reason I sell Harry Grant is to downgrade to Lussick. That is the only reason I would do it. But I wouldn't be selling to Appy. I wouldn't be selling to anyone else. I wouldn't be selling to a box. I guarantee that your bench hooker is a more logical option to Lusick and probably closer in terms of cash to Lusick than your starting hooker. But uh, like, what's changed? Like, did, did people like nothing spend? Did, did people spend eight weeks in the preseason just going, "Oh yeah, Melbourne have a shit three weeks and then a buy. Let's just forget about that." And then like, did they just forget that? Like, are they just panicking now when they look at the... Because he's... We said, we said, if he averages 60 for the first month, we are happy. We said this. Like, all preseason, we were like, okay, the draw sucks, then it gets really good. Grant's the best hooker by far. 55. He's he averaged 55. 55. So, like, real, really, his, his break-even's like 105. He could score that this weekend against the Newcastle Knights. 
who have looked awful. And also, yep. no Munster, no Hughes. Who's going to fucking do anything on this team? It's going to be Harry Grant. He's going to be relied upon in this game to do the majority. Now, him and Pappenhausen, we know him and Pappenhausen are probably one of the better duos in, in the competition in terms of um, stacks. We could see these two really take over in this game. And I would not be surprised in the slightest if we see a Storm win against a Newcastle uh, when they're underdogs. Because the Newcastle are favourites in this game somehow. Yep, dollar eighty six to dollar ninety six. Newcastle are favourites, but yeah, Harry Grant, man, like I'm just not selling him. Like Lussick, we've been given a gift from the gods to bail us out in round four. We're sitting here going, "Fuck, we have to play Denny Levi in round four. We've been given the the, the gods have taken have taken Hosking away, but they've given us Lussick, mm-hmm. and that's a hundred k. It's just it's a hundred k to get from him to from Levi. Just don't sell Grant. Like for God, for goodness, for goodness' sake. Like who scores more between now and round ten? Appy from round three to ten, or Grant from round three, Lusick round four, and then Grant from rounds five to ten. I'm yeah. putting a lot of money on the Grant combination there. I'm just yeah. I'm not selling him. Like not one bit. I don't care if he sell drops in price. Like he is. It's not like KP, where there's other elite fullbacks where you can be like, cool, we can get points from them. Like Appy scored a try. Well done. He's on track for 24 tries this year. Without the try, he gets 50. And yeah, we're not that's talking about him. That's what Grant's doing against a much, much tougher opponent. So uh, I am pretty keen to just uh, ride this one out, as I am with Brendan Piacora. Now, seeing a bit of bit of chat on Twitter. Um, sorry for anyone that's listening that isn't on Twitter. I recommend you get over there and follow me at SE Whisperer for about 25 tweets a day of just utter rubbish. But a lot of tweets about Brendan Piacora being sold, and I cannot understand this in the slightest. I'm not an owner, no. but even I can understand it. I am an owner. I haven't once considered selling him when he had 53 in base power last week. Like we, we talked about him in the preseason having poor base and he's gone and peeled out 50 in base on the weekend. A couple of negative stats, but I think 30 odd tackles, um, 15 or 17 in, in runs. That's kind of what like that. I'm very happy with that as an edge back rower in my team in the two RF. So yeah, good, he peels out an attacking stat and he team. scores his 70 and no one is talking about him. It's not like he's getting 48 in, like, for the Tigers. Like he's getting 48 for the Broncos where he will yep. get a tap. Um, yeah, if I was an owner and I'm sitting there looking at my 400K asset, he's the last person I'm looking at trading out. So yeah, it shows you there are people making some some wild trades, but there's a big list of cells and some big dumps to fight about. We've got a few of them. Ah, oh, man. I thought he was going to be a stud. He was. He was. He was supposed to be the man. He and Lukey. High grade syndesmosis. Uh, the only reason I wouldn't be selling this week is if my VC goes bonkers. That's the only reason I wouldn't be selling. But if you don't have that conundrum, get rid of him. As is Greg Marzu. Breno. Painful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, look, we were very lucky to dodge that. One of the very small amount of things that we dodged this year so far. But Greg Marzu, four weeks, it looks like he'll be out. Uh, surgery on that wrist slash hand issue, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, you you definitely have to with the price that he's at, you definitely have to move him on. Um, and Sua Wong, probably another guy, unfortunately, that you have to move on as well, considering he's um, in the extended bench. So you could probably hold out a little bit and just see what goes on here with these uh, twenty four hour cuts. But if he obviously is named outside that seventeen, you can probably move him on comfortably as well. Just before we touch on the next one, because he's the highlight of the cell. Um, Tommy, Tommy Leesman, he put in the, so let's go back to Piacora because he put in the chat, Whisper, are you looking at getting Piacora in two to three weeks when the draw opens up? Now, I hate the sell that much that I'm answering yes to this. I think Piacora could be a great pickup. We talk about Reese Walsh's draw, like that's Piacora's draw as well. So Piacora is absolutely a guy I'm looking at picking up in a couple weeks. If I can get Piacora for like 430, 440, that's a steal, I think, just from what I've seen. And this is like the beauty of the game. Like you've got to just be able to go, you know what I was wrong? You know, let's um, see how he goes against some tough matchups, but yes. Yeah. I was just going to say he's 426 right now. So uh, does this mean that you're admitting that you were wrong on Pia Kura and that you're going to pick him up? I'm not going to admit that I'm picking him up because if he comes out and just stinks it, yeah, for the day, like, it up. if that was just a high work rate game for him, then, you know, but from what I've seen, like I've, I don't see why I wouldn't be looking at picking him up. Like if Sean Lane caps out, Absolutely, a great move. But actually, let's leave him because we'll do him at the end because he'll take mm-hmm. the most talking points. But 
Drew Hutchinson stinks. Bum. Just just you move him on. <laughs> I'm very surprised he made it still actually got named this week. Like, what what are they doing with Toby Sexton? Because he is by far and away the better seven. Hey, what? Jason Demetrio needs to get on the blower and just go, hey, Gus, yeah. do you want Shaq Mitchell? And we'll, and we'll take Toby Sexton. 100%. Or, uh, you know what? Maybe the Gold Coast Titans use a seven. They could really use someone like a Toby Sexton, yeah, hey? Yeah, they could. <laughs> no, but like Drew Hutchinson has gone 34 32 uh, in a draw. Yeah, he's got the Titans this week, which could, could get some points. But then it's, you know, the Bunnies, Roosters, Melbourne. Newcastle, like, man, this it just didn't work out. Uh, you haven't lost anything. Just you're not going to make anything either. Just sell, sell before it's too late and you're stuck with him. And Denny Levi, I feel this is a little bit harsh. I don't think I don't think this is a slide on Denny Levi. I think it's just a admission of of Joey Lusick. Yeah, it's and also the fact that Danny Levi can't crack forty with a try is also right. a very large concern. We have been absolutely bailed out hard here. We have been like, we've I mean, been given a gift. Uh, Matrix was the biggest bailout of the fucking year oh. when, when he played him in round one for his 45 with a try. Um, that'll be the best score that Danny Levi ever scores. We, we probably would have, if he didn't score round one, we would have had to call lifeline for Matrix because nine points at half time, absolute ridiculous. But let's move on to the headline act of the cells. And I was pretty anti selling him, but. You look at the draws, you realize things open up, you, you realize that there's 159 break even, you realize that Tyson Gamble still gets named. It's KP. Mm. Mate, averaged 110 last year when he was at fullback goal kicking. Stats, stats, stats. It's just not, not gelling, is it? It's not happening for the Knights. And I guess now you've got two other two other considerations now. One might be a positive. I'm not sure whether the other one is. Now, Greg Marju being out, they've got a really good combination on the left. Now, when when you take out such an attacking weapon in Marju, there's a lot less threat in Anari Tuala. Now, that then probably creates this whole, what we saw in round one for Roger Tuavasa Shek, where he just got swarmed and pretty much doubled every time he caught the ball. Uh, do we see that now for Ponga? Are they going to be absolutely swarming the shit out of him whenever he gets the ball? I think they will yeah, be. You don't need to leave my, yeah, you can leave the wing open. Yep. I just, I don't know. Like, like Fisher in the chat is saying that KP is not passing the eye test for me at the moment. I would strongly disagree. Like, I think KP is is passing the eye test with flying colours. It's just the night suck and gamble is just like killing him. Like, I think the I think KP looks really good, and that's why I'm, it's so hard for me to sell because he looks great. Like, he he nearly scored twice last week. You know, nearly had two try assists. I keep saying nearly. I know that nearly doesn't score your points, but like it will turn. And I think KP looks good. It's just the Knights that don't look look great. So yeah, it's a tough. Also, one. With I, Hastings is out as well. Does, does Cogger benefit Ponga now in terms of the way that he plays? Because from what I've seen, he plays a little bit more direct than what Hastings does. So it'd be very interesting, uh, an interesting watch if you are somebody that's going to hold on to Ponga to see how this all gels. Yeah, and that's what what Lex says in the chat here. As you guys don't remember. Cogger giving like ball to clear in the grand final and we absolutely do and that's the thing like that's why for me Ponga isn't a slam dunk so you can never slam dunk sell a guy of KP's quality it's just can you get the same production for cheap prices or can you get a massive price swing to picking back up in round seven when the Knights do eventually find some form because I do think they will it's just going to be a case of when um but that leads me to my next point that if you don't sell you have to run this out Oh, yeah, that's right. And and to be honest, I have been very tempted to just not go with Trell, just hold Ponga and just ride the wave. Because when, if shout out to Aman, uh, who's done the stats on the, the best draws for fullbacks or the best matchups for fullbacks up until round 11, Ponga still takes the cake of all very close in, in comparison from round one to five and from round five to 10. So Ponga's matchups in the first 10 or 11 rounds, even up until Origin, are still ace. So it just you, you need to decide, are they going to come good? Are the Knights going to improve? Or are we going to basically just fade the Knights completely, which is I've seen in the chat from Josh Baxter a fair bit. Uh, are we going to fade the Knights? Because I don't think you're fading KP. I think you're fading the team he yeah. plays for. That's why I, I, just, I did want to, to, to disagree with Fisher there. Like I, I think KP's passing the eye test. I don't think it's, it's, it, this is a, it's a, 
Uh, if I can speak, goodness me. I don't think this is a him issue. I think this is a, a night to the whole, like, I said yeah. to you on Sunday, mate, there was like six, seven times where Gamble would just throw this dog shit ball on the fourth tackle and KP would have to jump on it. And then it just takes him out of the, of the equation. And it's just like, what's what's happening? Um, yeah. But yeah, that's going to be the sells for this week. We need to talk about our bets and then we'll answer some questions and wrap this one up, hey? Here comes the money. Oh. Here we go. Money talk. Money. What a champion. I fucking that carried you blokes last week. Does absolutely nothing for two weeks, then picks the two shortest legs and carries on like he's an absolute genius. No, we, we went down last week. The Sharks got up. Panthers got up. No surprise at $1.30 a piece, you fraud. Um, the Melbourne Storm, I took them minus five and a half. They got dusted. Look, that's fine. At least my team won. Matrix picked this in George Jackins. We got absolutely thumped. <laughs> yeah, he so did it me in Vegas where I took the unders and they went 30 points over. Uh, so we are down. We are down thirty bucks on the year, boys. Our, our beer money for Magic Round is not looking good, but let's be honest, let's win it back this week. Um, New Zealand Warriors minus five and a half. Pick your own line. The line set at six and a half. That Matrix just wanted the swing, so he's taken the Warriors at minus five and a half. You've taken Parramatta versus Manly over forty one and a half. I think this is like free money. Over forty one I mean, and a half. When I saw it, I'm like, these two teams love to score points and play fuck all defense, and it's also at Combank on a Sunday afternoon day game. Like we know that there's statistics that say that day games, you score more points in day games and night games. That's well documented. Is this, is this 41 and a half points by half time? Like that just feels way too low. I reckon they're going to score 22 points total the way I've been going this year. But <laughs> it, it makes sense. Logically in my head, I'm, I'm on it. That's probably one of my best bets this week. And then the, big, the biggest bet of the week, uh, it's going to come down to the last game of the round. If we're still alive, it's going to be pressure on me because... I've backed the Melbourne Storm as underdogs to defeat the Newcastle Knights, led by Tyrant Wishart, six-point Dalian masterclass. I don't know. Like, I just think Grant, you know, perhaps. Like, Jerome Hughes is cool. He's he's nice. He doesn't contribute to to, get to keeping Penrith scoreless. And I know the Wars, like, you know, put up some points, but Melbourne just weren't good. I, I think the defensive efforts from Melbourne is going to be enough to get the win here on the road and keep Bellamy happy. Otherwise, it's... uh. You know, what worrying times for me to face the wrath of you boys on Sunday night. <laughs> uh, if we get the win, you just don't know how it's going to go this year. But um, let's let's move into some questions time. It's question time. Let's answer your questions for the week ahead. So first of all, uh, we've started a few questions here. We can only get to probably 10 of them. We'll do our best. Um, these shows go along enough as it is. But I'll tell you I what, I'm going to get props... You can get okay. your questions answered in the Discord. So please feel free to join that uh, great place. Obviously, Insight Unlimited, 25 bucks, where we will answer all your questions. But if you don't want to pay for us because our ranks are 73K and 52K, yeah. respectively, blame that's, fair. that's fair. That's yeah. fair. There is a you know, a massive free community. There's a million channels. There's game day chats. There's trade advice chats. There's this, that, and the other. If you're also part of the Supercoach World Cup as well, you've got multiple sports there as well. So jump into the Discord totally free if you want to help us out with Unlimited please feel free for sure absolutely um and also shout out to matrix who has seven beers a podcast and only goes for one piss so this is this is on you for a couple of questions and i'll be back oh goodness okay uh i don't star these so i'm gonna have to 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 float this on the fly which is great i've been absolutely stitched up here so hardcore so i'm gonna flick through a couple of questions please get them in as we discuss um, but Tommy, Tommy asks, I've done S shadow Cleary, if that helps. Last week was a rough watch. Yeah, uh, it's tough because he's got the buy. Like, that's the thing with these, you know, elite halves. You've got Grant out with the buy in round four. You've got Hines out in round five and Cleary out in round six. So you're going to have to have a little bit of depth coming. Um, Ian Johnson says, guess the player. I'm sad if it's not happening. It will happen on three men podcasts. It's much better format with three men rather than two. Tommy Stewart, I can have Murray Talangi or Firma in my draft team this week. Who should I pick? Uh, goodness, I don't know. It's Talangi because draft to uh, center wing sucks. So, questions, real questions. Mr. Kaleo, Luki doesn't fit in or Smithies. I'm leaning Smithies. I would also lean Smithies. But then the question becomes, we've seen what Ricky has done this week with, with uh, Hosking and Whitehead. What do you do in that situation when if Smithies gets dropped? It's going to be a nightmare. I think the wraps on Smithies are huge. I would be very, very shocked. I have made a couple of charity bets that if Smithies gets dropped, then I am in all sorts of bother and all up shit creek. And I'm glad that Brano is back because you didn't leave any questions up on the screen for me. So I what panicked. 
Oh. Nothing came up on the screen. I panicked Sorry. and had to answer a couple of questions about draft, about this, that, and the other. So I'm glad you're Sorry. back. So let's get some structure happening. I fucked up. Uh, 404 error page is holding on to Ponger a bold strategy, Cotton. Uh, moment, or do I follow the other 14K weak gutted dogs? <laughs> I mean, following the crowd hasn't led very well this year so far. Yeah. I um, oh, We have to play it, don't we? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. What happens, I, what happens if you sell to Terrell and he comes out and scores like 41 points? Are you just <laughs> terrified? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I I am 50-50 on selling Ponga right now. Um, the, the only issue is the next two games suck for the Knights. I, I'm not 50-50. I'm, I'm, You're moving him on? I'm I'm like a, like a you-know-what in a chastity cage. I'm locked in, baby. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, moving good. it. Good. Fair call. Uh, <laughs> Alistair Matrix better be wearing a crown during the live stream. Uh, unfortunately, Sorry. if he if he was here, that is a thing that we're going to do this year. It's funny, uh, funny so you say that because yeah. you'll see a little crown next to our name at the bottom there um, for the person who wins the week. Um, maybe we'll make it a little because we live so far away. We can't exactly just have a fucking trophy that we just pass on to each other every single week. But oh, remember those hungry jacks crowns? We might. I might head down to my local HJs and get. <laughs> yeah, get yourself a whopper while you're there yeah, as well. Exactly. Good burger. Yeah. Um, choke artist. Apparently, Ricky has history with Hosking. He was a weak gutter dog back then, and a weak gutter dog now. Yeah, yeah, it, it sounds like it. Um, there's a lot of fade the knights and sell ponga chat. Um, Mr. CBB35 says that Insight need a teamless Monday. Um, I'm I'm not quite sure whether we can. <laughs> for who's gonna be on? <laughs> That's probably one of the better comments I've seen this year. Oh, um, mate, what did you want to shout? <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I like that. Maybe we'll have to do an official announcement every single week about who's going to be running the podcast because well, there's a lot of people. Tuesday. Yeah, four o'clock Tuesday. You're going to find out who runs it. Um, what else have we got? Is Levi to Lusick worth the trade? I think we've probably said that it is, Josh. Like, uh, I don't know whether there's too much else to dive into, but I know that both got negative break even. So maybe that's the question. No, but the thing is, though, like, let's be real. Let's let's be real here. Like, yes, ha ha ha. Levi scores. Funny, funny, ha ha. He's not going to score every week. And if he doesn't, he gets a, he gets a 13. And then last six break even is like minus a million. Like I'll do my break even post and I'll be out on Twitter tomorrow and Instagram and Facebook, wherever you follow me. Like I'll have that out tomorrow for years. But the difference right now is 100K. I think the projected difference is going to be like 170K next week. So yeah. if you wait a week, because like if you won't grant, I've said that, like if you're in Grant, you need Lusick, I think, because like you just have no confidence playing um, Levi. Then it's like, do you wait a week and lose seventy k, which is still fine. Like I think Lusick's going to make good money, but I'd rather just do it now. Like I, I only, I not only do I think it's worth a trade, I think it's worth a boost, boost for Lusick. Hey. Well, we were going to do boost for Elliot. We didn't really talk about Adam Elliot even that much in this oh, episode, we, and there's a bit I, of I around just, that. I just want to see the minutes watch for Elliot, like. Nice break even, but I just want to see the minutes. We discussed this on Sunday. Like AOB's forward rotation is all over the shop. So let's just give it as much data as possible. For the Inside Unlimited members as well, um, this one's for you. Matrix sounded like he was running away from robbing someone earlier today. So it sounded like, so every single week we'll hop in Big the experts note, chat. Guys. Big voice and, note, guys. And Yeah, we'll, we'll leave a voice note because we're kind of, we our fingers hurt. And um, Matrix sounded like he was doing his when he was going for a run. So it, it was interesting. Hard to understand the bloke, though, when he's running. Sounded pretty unfit, to be fair. Um, but anyway, well, uh, it, maybe he's the fittest of the lot because he actually runs more than both of us. Oh, man, I'm, um, not. His, I'm not a runner either. Don't worry. And I'm a PT, so you're excused. Uh, Mark Lawless, have the cash to go Lukey to Hopgood. So he's not someone we've spoken about tonight. Any love for Hopgood? I know maybe we're chasing last week's points. Far out. How much is Fifi? Like... I know I want to see him. 830 like, or something. And what's Hopgood? He'd be like 750. Yeah, he's 750. Oh, goodness. Um, I'd probably rather Hamole. Yeah. Do we think do we think Hopgood's a smoky for origin? Yes. Yeah. I think I think Absolutely. probably Hamole is is him in terms of like your two RFs. Um I mean, if we just filter through two RFs, like I don't want to tell you off Hopgood. Like, yeah, I mean, if you're locked in, I'm not gonna say no to buying Hopgood, of course. But I love Nanai. Like Nanai is is hundred and thirty k cheaper. Like I love Nanai. Um, Isaiah Yo is very boring. And that's not very sexy. I know it's probably the most optimal, but it's not sexy. Uh, I like I like Nanai. I like Ola Kawatu as well, my man. So like, 
Hopgood's cool. Hopgood's nice, but like, I think you can get similar output from Neno. Yeah. yeah I think SA Guns, Guns did, a good, did, a, did a good thing. I think you were saying that like they play like two of the next attention last year between now and like the first round of Origin. So like right. Neno could be a great shout. I'm also just trying to stall for time until I can pull up the exact thing because I do want to give the main credit. Uh, so then I placed three top eight teams from 2022 before he goes off to origin and he's 590k and he's been doing well. He's not going to be rested. He's not the Gaseski rest risk. I think it's, um, it's Finny Filiaki. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Imagine next week we see Nana I just start to trot off the field and, uh, we see Jack Gaseski come on the field. Oh, fucking hell. It could be, could be all sorts. Uh, Terry King, uh, what's your thoughts on trading out? Bradman best, I'm assuming. Trading at um, best and trading in, yeah, so I'm assuming trading at best and trading in Val Holmes and perhaps. Oh, trading, I'm assuming that's okay. It's supposed to be KP. Trading at KP best and trading in Holmes and Pappy. Newcastle struggling and needs some players with points. What are your thoughts? I don't mind that. I mean, you've just got to get through the buy for Pappenhausen, which is that's the deterrent. The like, this is the thing with Pappenhausen. It's so hard to say he's a buy or he's not a buy. If you won't grant, I don't think he is. That's if you're not a grant owner, then I think load up on on paps. All systems go, but I'm a grant owner, and I've made it very clear I'm not selling. Um, so I probably just can't have him, Chan, and Pappenhausen out on the buy, um, and probably also looking at buying Xavier Coates just for pure vibe points off that try last week. So you know, there's four guys sure. I'm gonna have that. <laughs> yep. No, but like I, I just I don't think you can have paps and. Um, Hyen Pines. I'm losing my mind. Perhaps end Grant until after the buy. But also take over an hour and a half on the podcast. Things just start getting a bit freaky. We've also said all preseason. Like Pap's got a great fixture thing. Like round eight, I want to say he won't be playing Origin. You get you're yeah. still going to have Hughes there. Like Hughes is a Kiwi, so he'll be there. So you'll still have one good spine player. Munster and and Pap and Grant will be out to Origin, of course. But I think Grant, uh, Paps a great pickup. Yes, you're going to be probably paying more than what you want to. But I think if you can get Paps still under 800k by round seven, that's fine. Yeah, so seven, they've got Roosters, eight Souths. Then they've got nine, the Titans, 10, the Sharks, 11, Para, 12, Manly. And right, then might they're be playing 13. Might, might so nine. still not too bad. Um, and I guess it gives us a little bit more time to see whether he's eventually going to get the goal kicking back or whether it's Nick Meany's all season. Because if he gets the goal oh, kicking, it changes the conversation. Also, I think I'd rather Teddy. If you're a grant owner, I know Teddy's yeah. draw is very up and down, but I'd rather him with no buy. I think Teddy with no buy outscores um, perhaps with the buy. Fair. Uh, Paul Vard's asking, are you going to give a positional rundown of the current World Cup? Um, so in the Discord, we will. So we'll put a, a social media post up on the top five every single week in NRL, AFL, and overall. But in the Discord, I'm going to put up the whole spreadsheet of everyone and where they stand. So if you want a little bit more of an additional rundown, just join the Discord. The link is in the description. Uh, I know I assume, you're in there, Paul, anyway. I assume Paul's asking just because of my rank. And I'm actually ranked ninth in AFL, Paul, if you are. Uh, I'm sure that's why, why you wanted to know. <laughs> that's what he would have known, 100%. Uh, Jamie Camilleri is asking for advice. He's got uh, he's got to trade Wong and he's got to trade Lukey. He... Um, have Jewel for feeder with forwards Neem, Henry, and Hughes. Is is Terrell May a must? See, I'm so autistic that I need a visual representation. So I'm trying to like picture this in my head. So, so he's got to Jewel move Wong and Luki. He's got That's the Jewel for in for feeder. That's for, for in front row. With and then Neem, Neem, Henry, and Hughes. And Hughes. Neem's fine. Henry's probably also fine. I, yeah, I, like, Terrell May is a must. I think. I think so, especially with that front row. Neem, Henry, and Hughes in the front row. I think you need to move for feeder down and get Terrell May in, so you've got someone you can rely on that's going to get you more than fifty most weeks. And that's what I'm. I'm struggling. But like, like my team's good apart from my front row because I'm just holding Lenu until next week. So I'm having to run Henry as my sort of like eighteenth man, a seventeenth man. Um, but when the time comes, yeah, I'll be moving him on as well. So I think just fixing up that front row. Terrell May is a stud. Get him in. Last one, Tupanua. Is he a sell? No, not this week. Thirty-one break even. Um, still got some money to be made. The question isn't because isn't is uh, the question isn't is he a sell? The question is is he a start or sit? And that's what I'm going to discuss with Brano once we finish this podcast because I'm looking at Tupanua, Burbo, or Chan as my sort of last reserve. So I'm not selling him this week. He's definitely on shaky ground. He's he's on fraud watch. Um, but a break even of thirty-four. 
Goodness me. Supercoach would give him a 43% chance to hit that. That's a bit that's a bit stiff. Very a bit stiff. harsh. It's a bit harsh, yeah. but no. 31 uh, 34 break, Yeah, 100%. 34 break even. Um I'm happy just to give him one more chance because if he gets an attacking stat, that's another 30k that you get out of him if he didn't sell. Um I mean, it depends. Like, if you're selling him for, like, if you're like me and you're potentially benching him this week, then yeah, probably you could look at selling him to use that money to get a better playable option. But if he's like your, if he's, if you're looking at him as like your 17th man this week, that's fine for one more week. Yep. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, that's all we have time for in terms of questions. Guys, if you want your questions answered every single day in the Discord, there's tons flying through the Discord at the moment. You can become an Insight Unlimited member. It gives you access to us, but also AFL, NBL, BBL. If you're in the World Cup, could be valuable info there. Uh, only costs 25 bucks for the full year. So jump in the Discord or, or hit me up or, or hit Josh up in the DMs and, and we'll lead you in the right direction. What you say? Um, 25, 25 bucks and there's, what, 100 rounds of the World Cup? So what's that? Yep. 25, 25 cents around? 25 cents around. And uh, I mean, hopefully someone, uh, someone's obviously going to take it out, but it'd be very interesting to see what it looks like in terms of the balance between your sports. Because yeah. we might see someone finish 40,000th in a sport and be good enough to win, considering the, the fluctuation in the stats at the start of the episode. 100%. 100%. So yeah, definitely. Um, I love, I love the World Cup. I don't want to keep saying it was my thing but like it's one one of the it only was. good ideas I've ever, it's one of the only good ideas i've ever had I, I love it because it's it makes you keen on other sports but yes inside unlimited 25 dollars a year you get full access to our rc experts channels for nrl afl bbl and nbl uh the nrl is obviously hosted by myself at rank 73k remember that when you pay your 25 bucks um matrix and braino as well we're in there answering all your questions if we don't just flick us an at and we, we get to them but yeah, access to our trades, like our exact trades, our thought processes, any late changes that we have, full team reveals, captaincies, all that stuff. Um, I'm sure that you do want the expert analysis of a man ranked 73K. So, yeah, if you want to finish in the your top 100K, we've got you covered. Um, so, <laughs> um, but no, that'll, on a serious note, that'll that'll do us. Uh, obviously, we couldn't get to everyone's questions, but yeah, jump in the Discord if you want to have a chat with the community or, or become an Insider Unlimited member if you want to get our thoughts. Thanks for watching, guys. We do appreciate the love every single week. You, you guys are hopping on and getting involved in the comments and and watching every week, and we love it. Um, so we we do appreciate you, and thank you for jumping on. Um, remember to subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit like, uh, hit the bell so that you get notifications on when we go live every single week. It'll be Tuesdays. We also do an Insight Unlimited Q&A on a Wednesday as well. Um, but then also we go live on a Sunday to wrap up the week. And also join the World Cup, would you? Honestly, like it's good fun. And it's fucking twenty bucks. When is when is the hard lockout for people that are well, end of round twelve before the round thirteen NRL bias start Goodness. is when it wraps up. So you've got plenty of time. But in saying that, you're gonna pay double now. So that's right. that's the risk. You're gonna pay twenty bucks to get involved, everybody else paid ten. So um yeah, it, but if you're backing yourself and you like where you're sitting, jump on in, pay the twenty and, and take us on for the rest of the season. That'll Absolutely. do. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We will see you uh, for the Insight Unlimited Q&A in the next couple of days. But otherwise, if we don't, good luck this week. Plenty of green arrows and see you Sunday night. And cheerio. Farewell.